All right, folks. Let's bring this down to a tolerable level. Let's see who's talking to you. Hey. <laughs> Oh, I forgot my graphics here. Good morning, everyone. We are here on the final day, uh, what I like to call Championship Sunday. Championship Sunday. Live from Denver March Powwow 2024. And again, I uh, want to mention our advertisers, our sponsors, and um, there's another one. I didn't get the graphics loaded, but uh, Southwest Trading Company. Shout out to um, South Southwest Trading Company, David. Uh, glad to be working with you. We got some blankets to be able to give away um, during one of the live streams, and I had planned on doing it during Denver March, but various technical difficulties like bad technical difficulties in the in the beginning of the January wasn't able to promote it like we wanted to and then we think there's a uh, something wrong with our app you guys can go download our app but um, doing our live streams from there and everything we're still having to rely on Facebook and YouTube and all that but we have some blankets uh, donated by Southwest Trading Company and we're gonna be giving those away we just got to figure out how we're gonna do that because the original way we were gonna do that what isn't going to work out um so if you guys are just not tuning in uh just getting around from church or breakfast or maybe you're just not getting up maybe you need to get some coffee they are doing the royalty introductions we're going to get through with drum roll call here in a second um getting geared up for grand entry at uh, 11 o'clock and so we're going to be we're going to be getting ready um, I don't know if you can see right here. Denver March is making her appearance. She's going to come right about here. But uh, royalty introductions going on right now. Our schedule? Schedule today, I'm not going to say it's light, but it's a little bit less than yesterday. It looks like... We are having the finals for all the specials. Teen Girls Fancy, Ladies Old Style, and then Women's Fancy Shawl. There is a uh, Donina Howell, Women's Old Style Fancy, 18 plus. That's gonna be today. Then they'll have all the fi finals for all the uh, adult categories and whatever else has a, a final or a contest tie. Any of that, they'll take care of that throughout the rest of the day. And then they will have the new princess, the 2024 Denver March um, coronation later on in the afternoon. We'll have another presentation of the the powwow, the Denver March powwow song. The fry bread concession stand will close at seven o'clock. So last call for your fry bread will be, I'm assuming, somewhere around 6:45. Hopefully you guys get in line, get some of that award-winning fry bread from the Wolf's Plate. Uh, man, had it two days in a row. Good, really, really good. Actually, we took another picture yesterday. The one yesterday looked a little bit better than the one day before, just presentation-wise, but you know, it's all good. And then uh, we'll have all the uh, winners. We'll bring them to you. I try to work with the the um, tabulators. Try to get those on screen, but if not, you know they'll announce them and we can celebrate then. But um, yeah, first call has already been sent for uh, dancers and singers to get to their drums, get their regalia on. Uh, grand entry is about to happen. Color guards getting suited up gonna be a fun day again championship Sunday right here on Lone TP Productions um, assisted by sponsored by advertising our advertisers Wolf Star Printing LLC again reach out to them if you guys want to get your shirts done any of that they're open for business um, 
uh, Kiowa Casinos. Big shout out to Kiowa Casinos, their marketing team. They're um, uh, got locations in Duval, Oklahoma. Really, really nice property. And then they're opening up a new property in Hobart. And then they got another smaller facility over there in, uh, in Carnegie. Carnegie. I don't have any powwow announcements. Um, I know there was some being left on the live stream. Uh, we're going to have... Um, yeah, we're going to switch over to the prayer that's going on right now. Drums, singers, dancers, contestants, families. Importantly, our warriors, veterans, those who are serving, service men, service women, the armed forces. Where I come from, our late father, Goy Gudel Te, Red Wolf. You know him as a late Leonard Kozad Sr. You know, a lot of our families, we have heroes. Some of us look upon our elders for guidance, most importantly, the teachings, the learning process. We're never too old or never too young to learn. We have a life to live, time to be happy, Time to be sad, time to be in mourning, bereavement. Some of us have ailments, some of us have hardships, but you look at both of these things every day, we try our best to find that balance. To give thanks to the creation, creation God's creation, we're in this circle here of different tribes, different nationalities, different way of life, faith, or language. Our societies, when I talk to our people here in Denver, a lot of our local powwows, I talk about the ancestors. That's where you come from. You come from your mama. You come from your daddy. You come from your maternal and paternal side of your people. Your grandparents, your great-grandparents, your great-great-grandparents and the elders, the ancestors. That's why we're here today. That's why you sit at the drum, harmonize the music, the songs to make these dancers feel good. All you dancers, singers, and all the people here, we didn't do this by ourselves. Well, who put it there? God, creation, dog, E, however you call the high power in your language. He is there. He's always been there. Been there before we came up on this earth, before we were born. God existed. All good things He made are Indian people our language, our ceremonies. In the northern and southern plains, our warrior societies where everything derived, what we call powwow today. The international and intertribal gathering of Indian people, the common thing we say, friendship, then later on we take each other as adopted relatives. Our elders left this way for us they paved a road for us to follow. Some of us call it the Red Road. Some of us call it the Holy Road. Nothing's easy in this life. It's never going to be. Nothing's perfect, but we try to do our best to live the way God gave us a life. When we get up in the morning, we say our, our praises to the creation, 
to help us throughout this day. Some of today is in the morning today, relatives, lost loved ones. But then again, our elders tell us life's got to go on because we got our families, we have our children, our loved ones. Far and near, when you go home tonight, tomorrow, you go home, you find it a whole lot better than the way you left it. And then some, all the spring, summertime, our tribal ceremonies are coming up. We're anticipating the time to sacrifice and to endure. Endure. But somehow with these prayers, we get throughout the, the day. God is good. God is great. Help take care of our elders, the handicapped, the homeless, those incarcerated like that. And Almighty God, listen to our heart when we shed our tears. Does somebody need prayer today? They're going to need your prayer. They're going to need your thought. Pray for your enemies. They need your prayer. Praying people need prayers too. Everything be good for all of our people in this life that God gave us. Well, they call it Sabbath day, but Indian people, we're a praying people. We give thanks to Almighty God for the universe, the constellations out there, the earth, the elements on this earth that grow our plants and animals, the four-legged winged creatures, all the things that God put there for you and I. We can talk about a lot of things in this life here today. I want to tell my, my big brother, Chico, for asking me to do this, but ultimately I give all the praise and glory to the creation, God. Thank you. They own the Tonko Pega Doki, Doki and Haigado. Grandfather, great spirit, Doki. You know everything. All of our people in the circle here, different tribes, different languages, different songs, different dances, all because of you. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory for this creation. You help us every day in our life, our elders that are here amongst us. Bless them every day. They have gone through a lot throughout these years. The teachings they have bestowed upon our people back on the reservation, our tribal communities where we were born and raised. Some of us have to move away from our home to make a living, just like here in Denver, Colorado, and all these other big cities across the country to raise our family. The things that we have gone through all these years, God, you're still there. 
You're still there. Dalky. Almighty God, creation. Spirit of God. All the things the devil might have done mistakenly. People say, forgive us of our sins, our shortcomings. But Indian people were a little different when it comes to our prayers. Because you made us Indian, our ancestors, like dad used to say, you're an Indian. Don't, don't be ashamed. You can't wash that skin color away. Be proud of you, who you are if you're more than one two, two tribe. Almighty God, today you made everything for our people here, our Guntehi, eagle feathers today. They don't belong to one different, all the different tribes here, not to one tribe, but many tribes that we share these feathers. Because they are sacred to our people, we use them in many different ways. Almighty God, you take care of our, our warriors today, our veterans today, bringing in their stars and stripes, red, white, blue. The veteran songs and the things that we do in appropriate times of our Indian people. Today, we call it social gathering, we call it powwow today, Denver March Powwow Committee, that you bless each one of them. Yesterday, I kind of mentioned that a little bit. Bless the committee, the hit staff, the people here that come far and near travel to Denver, Colorado. There was so much to do in this life. We have so much work to do ahead of us. Every day we fall short sometimes too. Be with those in hospitals today and those who are homeless today and those in mourning, those who are going through a bereavement. Whatever hardships people are going through today, I want you to be with them in a good way, that somewhere a prayer be said and someone going to find a healing. That's all we're looking for. For a better t today and tomorrow and in the future, our children. There'll be no harm and danger to our children when they go to school every each day. Be with them in that way, our people, our folks and family and friends, wherever they go, in four directions, to the east, south, west, the north, and all the seven directions to the life that our people believe in, our ways of life, our prayers, our incense, our paints, everything that pertains to our native way of living today because of you, you put it there for, for us to use at certain times in our life. Help us every day in our life, whatever we try to do, the mistakes we make, we could go on. Everything that can go on this way, everything be good for all of our people. All this I say to your sons, Jesus Christ, holy presence name, I hope by thong ya, amen, amen, and amen. Julius, not afraid, we need you over to uh, Lame Deer Drum. Walter Crossdog, come and see Chico. Walter Crossdog, come and see Chico. As we get ready to go, my good friend, uh, Michelina Big Man, started the Native American Women Warriors out here in 2010. She was uh, featured in Marquez Who's Who, the world's premier publisher of bibliographer profile since 1898, Who's Who, Women of Influence, Who's Who, Professional Women, Michael Bit. Uh, Michalina, big man, 2024 got an award for that. Who's who? I just wanted to mention some of our accomplishments of our warriors. Michalina also, pinnacle professional member, has been inducted. Certified inductee. 
She has done her best to bring this group forward and to have some short stories published in a book. And I met her in 2010. Somehow I felt a very strong pull to her. And as men and women, you think that pull is to be together, but that pull was to be a helper, to encourage her, to stay strong, to rise above, to put her insecurities aside and to carry on. And all of these things she has done and the honor and recognition has come through. She has made outfits for her organization. She has had difficulties with some members who have had a different vision of what it is to be a Native American woman warrior. And that's okay. They're, they're, they're able to have that vision, but the vision that she put forward, the vision that she ensued to talk to these Native American women warriors and have them come out and stand proud for what they did and who they are shines through these 14 years. I've had calls in the middle of the night where she has talked to me to say I'm having a hard time. And I just encourage her to keep going forward because it's, it's not when you get knocked down, it's not when you get kicked in the teeth, it's how you get up, how you dust yourself off and proceed throughout the world because our ancestors, like that prayer talked about, we're only here for them. We're only continuing to live through the vision that they had for us. And Micheline has had that vision. And I wanted to say that much on behalf of my good friend she comes finally in her whirlwind journey to come back to Denver and be with us. And I just want to say I encourage her every step of the way. I have talked to her over these 14 years. I don't know if I've helped, but I've tried to uplift my good friend, to give her a hand when she stumbled, to give her a hand through encouragement, and that's what I've done as a helper. I don't think I've done anything, but Michelina thinks I have. Some of us don't realize in our hour of need that Creator God sends somebody to pick us up, to encourage us to carry on. Some of you might not realize it. Some of you are walking around not awake. And what I mean by that is take a look at your life. Every time you've been down, every time you thought you were out, every time that you were sinking in the mud of despair and you reached out and said, Creator God, are you there? Are you helping me? You should have been saying, I know Creator is not against me. Because in that last minute, Creator sends people to help you. He sends that rope to lift you out. He sends that person and works through different ones. As Indian people, we call them helpers. To move you away from the ledge unbeknownst to you. And so these things happen. And for myself and Chris over the years, Chris is a lot older than I am, but I'm getting there. I have been to a few ceremonies. I've been to a few things. And in each of those times, on behalf of a bundle, the midi body bundle, on behalf of ceremony, all these things they say, ask for what you want. Ask for what you need. And all I can do is stand there as a man and say, Creator God, I'm grateful for the life you've given me. 
Creator God, I'm thankful for the things that you've given me. If it is you who have given me this voice to talk to all the people, I give you praise and glory for that. I have aches, I have pains, I have need, I have want. But compared to what you've given me, I don't need anything. And so that's a very strong spiritual undertaking. And so maybe some of you do realize what I'm saying. Have any of you gone? You're late to go somewhere. You're late to have something happen. You're late to do whatever. And in the middle of all that, you lost your keys. And you take 10 minutes out of your life to find those keys. And then your child or somebody comes over and you're deterred again. Fifteen minutes. For those are my, my non-indigenous friends, they like to be on time. But Creator God sent somebody down to interfere with you because five minutes down the road, there is a horrific accident that has happened. And because you lost your keys, because somebody's looking out for you, there, by the grace of God, you would have been in that accident. That might be a little bit dramatic, but you know my point. So you never know where helpers come from. You never know where things happen. I told my daughter one time, she was going to Brazil for the indigenous games. Five things stopped her from going. And she was sad and she was angry. She even flew to the Chicago consulate to try to get her passport and visa to get down to Brazil. And what I told her is, my daughter, I love your tenacity for wanting to go, but you have to remember something or someone is looking after you and saying you shouldn't go. Three weeks after that, her friends came back and told her what a horrible time they had. And so she understood that something didn't want her to go down there. So what I'm saying is, when you take time to look at your life, if you take time to look at your life, there are things that happen that you just can't explain. Those are those things that you've been praying about. I don't know if all of you pray. I'm not trying to sell religion to you, but spiritually, we pray. When we ask for things, they do not come in the shape and form that we ask for. We ask for wealth, and we die broke. And we wonder, why didn't you give me wealth? And Creator God will come to us in the other life and said, I gave you friends. In my life, I've never had any brothers. And I've been adopted into Chico Hermeni Horse's family as my brother. He sent that to me to uplift me in the wealth that the Creator promised me. It's not in gold coins. It's not in this day of uh, shamrock shakes and pots of gold. It's in the journey of spiritualism, prayer, talking, touching people's lives. And so I give you this little bit. And you can take it or leave it. I'm not trying to sell you anything. But somewhere along the line, it'll come to you. And if it don't, it won't matter on the other side anyway. So on this beautiful Sunday, how many of you uh, white people are here for the Lawn and Garden Show waiting for all of the tools to come out? No? You're with the Native Americans. You're with the indigenous people. We are going to, we're going to pray. We're going to sing. We're going to dance. You may buy an Indian taco or not. But we're going to have a good time. 
Friday at 11 o'clock, we started the journey of competing in dance categories. Sunday, we'll have our finals, and this evening, we will have winners. This evening, we'll have a new Denver March ambassador. We'll have winners, we'll have losers. And that's all right, because that's the way of life. But for some of you white people that are here, if you want to adopt an Indian that loses this category, you're more than welcome to. You just got to feed them for a week and then send them home with some gas money. Now that's a little bit different. We were talking about snagging. I don't know if we can snag on Sunday, but does everybody know what snag means? <laughs> means a, a meaningful relationship for three days only. According to Colorado and the, the, the city of Denver, if you are with somebody cohabitating for seven, you might be married. All right, common law. I'd like you all to please rise and remove your headgear. Now, grand entry is going to take quite a while, so I'm going to ask you respectfully to rise right now. And as we go through grand entry, we talk about categories, you may feel the need to sit down. Go right ahead, okay? You're not going to break any law. You're not going to hurt anybody. But respectfully, I'd like you to all stand. There's a gentleman that was asked to compose a song. And as he tells it in his humble way, he didn't compose the song. It, was, it came to him like he caught it. And what I mean by that is the tune came to him through the wind or through any one of the uh, four directions and, and weather, and he heard it. And so even though humbly he's given credit for composing the song, he always tells everybody it came to him and he caught it from the spirit world for our people. That's how humble he is. He has been the creator of many songs or the catcher of many songs. He has been the interpreter of our language. And for those of you that don't know him, he's not holy. He did a lot of evil man things when he was younger. But he's become to this point of holiness. What I mean by that is his age and how he handles himself, how he handles himself around the drum, how he sings, speaks his language, talks to anybody that will listen to him about the way of life that we carry on. He caught this song, A Living Hoop. The words in English are White Mountain People. The celebration that you have is a living hoop. From all over the universe, even Grandfather Creator and Grandmother Earth help you and all joyfully come to dance. And I tell you that because all of you don't know Lakota. And maybe some of you do. Maybe you got the app. I don't know. But I interpret that for you and that's what he's going to sing. Then he's going to send it down to the drum. And then we are going to continue with Grand Entry and we're going to go over to drum number 15, I believe. Is that right? Zotai. And then we'll continue from there. Denver, how are you doing? Are you having a good time? Tell me the truth now. Only, only the white people in here, tell me the truth. Are you mad that we didn't start at 11 o'clock? Okay. For those of you that came into the room of the Coliseum, it was just like me coming into Colorado. My clocks changed to mountain time. As you pass the Coliseum doors, you have now entered Indian time. And for those of you that don't understand Indian time, when we get our stuff together and when we're ready to go, that's when it will happen. 
and we're at that time, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to have you yell as best as you can and scream as best as you can for this young man down here, Howard Badhand, the composer or catcher of the song. Denver, would you make some noise for this young man down here? It is an honor and a privilege to have Heartbeat and Howard here with us with his knowledge and vast experience as I turn it over to Howard Badhand. Thank you, Lawrence. And uh, Lawrence took away the talk I normally give about where the sun came from. So thank you, Lawrence. This song, as Lawrence said, is something that I did not compose. But it was given to me by the Skyline Mountains west of here. And the melody that you'll hear is a relief of those mountains. And so I believe that the creator and grandmother Earth, the song was already there. And when I was asked to compose the song, I became open to it. And now it's your song. This song is meant for the native people of the Denver area, but I look at it as this song is meant for all people who come here to celebrate with us. And so one day I hope that you all get a chance to dance to this song, dance your song. And so my daughter usually sings this with me, but she blew her voice out Friday night. And so she's here to make sure that I stay balanced. But this is my daughter, Erica. And at this time, I will sing that song, and we'll bring the dancers in. Once again, Denver, as we gather to be among the mountains, to gather to be among our relatives, to gather to be among the people of Denver, Colorado. We want to say welcome to each and every one of our tribes. 580 still recognized through the United States. 120 not recognized. And all the tribes that came to be in America, to make America, the Scottish, the Irish, the Chinese,
Chinese, the Japanese, the German, the Jewish people. All these people have come to this land called America to find out who they are and what they would see here today is the great experiment of the melting pot of one people, the American people, that still carry on their culture, their songs, their way of life. We, as indigenous people, are but a shadow of the strong and independent ancestors that course through our blood, our lineage, how we do the things that we do, why we do the things that we do. And to try to be uplifting spiritual trying to give back and not take <laughs> ladies and gentlemen we have our honored staff carrier and flag bearers we have our color guard behind them and in the back, we have making her final grand entry as the 48th annual Denver March Princess, Lennon Paskaman. How about making some noise, Denver? Behind her, we have all of the royalty that has joined Lennon Paskaman in celebrating the Denver March celebration. Pow wow. Royalty, give us a wave. Denver, make some noise for all of our royalty. Behind the royalty, we have our living treasures. These first 10 or 15 gentlemen are all over the age of 70 years of age, dancing in the arena. Behind them, we have golden age, 60 to 69. Behind them, we have 40 to 59. Behind them, we have 18 to 39. Men's traditional coming into the arena. How about some noise for all them men, Denver? Pick us up, Zota. You're listening to the Zotai singers originally from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Sure, sure, sure. Oh, sure. what a beautiful sound. Stand by, drum number 16. The horses stand by.
Southern men coming into the arena. Pick it up, boys, pick it up. Keep it going. Don't let these moccasins cool off. Now entering the arena, we have our Ben Fancy Feather Dancer. Double bustle. Coming in, they're still coming in.
keepers of our family, our kinship. Keepers of Ujimaka, grandmother. Final grand entry. Denver, how about making some noise for our women category? categories 18 to 39 Southern Buckskin and Cloth Northern Buckskin and Cloth categories Pick it up. Warpath. Thank 
now we have our Teen Girls category, Teen Girls Traditional. Teen Girls Fancy, next drum, next drum. Oh, metal jacket. Rocking on a Sunday afternoon here in Denver, Colorado. Denver, March 2024. Our final grand entry. Our grand entry, the greatest show on earth. 
How about making some noise for our tiny tots? What a big round of applause for our grand entry, our final grand entry here for Denver March Power. If you haven't already done so, I'm going to ask you in a good way to sit down for just a second. We're going to come to a flag song. There's a, if you weren't with me, I talked about on Friday and then Saturday, the warrior way. And... I'm reminded of my father and my grandfather who were drafted and joined the armed forces. I have a poem that was sent to me by a beautiful woman that served her country as an indigenous woman. And I feel obliged on behalf of my father and grandfather to read it for you just for a second. And you may understand how our warrior indigenous people feel but this was penned by a woman warrior the poem is a warrior's cry no one sees my pain the struggle of not fitting in anywhere the inner battles i carry daily within sometimes too much to bear i cry in silence to evade the ridicule of society's lack of understanding. I put on my outerwear armor of strength to show I am still standing. My heart aches for the comrades lost in an unjust war, coming home to a people that expect more and more. History illustrates the countless times to eliminate my kind. But our spirit has overcome time after time, continuing to fight the battle of racism towards me, not even considered a race, but a political entity. No matter how hard I work or try, no one sees this warrior cry. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a poem written by an indigenous woman coming home after years in the military. And I feel obliged on behalf of my father, the late Milton Baker, my grandfather, the late Emerson Baker, to say that to you in a good way so maybe you'll have some understanding. I'm going to ask you to please rise and remove your headgear as we come to Lame Deer for the flag song and the victory song. Lame Deer, if you would. Need the mic over here.
Now we come back to Lame Deer for a victory song. Lame Deer, if you would. Victory song, boys. Hookah. So I'm going to give you a second to get back into order. I want everybody to sit down, but I want you to still make some noise. 
Ah, that's the way. Good. Ladies and gentlemen, in the Coliseum here at Denver March Powwow, royalty has been going on since 1977 to 2023. And there is a different format in 1987. And I want it to let the current Denver March Princess understand what she has become and what and who she is. In 1987, Rolina P. Hyde was the princess. In 88, Lucille Nicholas. 89, Red Dawn Foster. 1990, Sage Marie C. Yardley. 1991, Carla Birdshead. 1992, Paula Rillard. These are all former princesses of Denver. 1993, Tamara Gallegos. 1994, Jesse Spotted Tail. 1995, Shane Hughes. 1996, Jason Windy Boy. 1997, Linnell Bolt. 1998, Rebecca Sherwood. 1999, Ellison LaPlante. In 2000, Felicia Gallegos was the princess. 2021, I mean 2001, Lauren Frank. 2002, Michelle Flying Man. Now, if you're related to any of these people I mentioned, you can make as much noise as you'd like. In 2003, Ali Denny. 2004, Del Marina One Feather. In 2005, Cheyenne Brady. In 2006, Adriana Roulard. In 2007, Autumn Zotai. In 2008, Amanda Ironstar. In 2009, we had an ambassador, Johnny DJ Johnson. In 2010, we had Larissa. Evelyn No Braid. In 2011, we had Michaela Sunroads. In 2012, we had Kelsey Has No Horse. In 2013, Lennon's older sister, Simone Paskiman, was Denver March Princess. In 2014, Jordan Paz. In 2015, Michaela Sage. In 2016, Kaya Claremont. In 2017, Rose Good Eagle. In 2018, Jonna Grace Brady. In 2019 to 2021, COVID years at a cat. Sim Sin Heavy Runner. In 2022, Tessa. Holds the enemy, Abby. And as we come in, I want to say to this beautiful young woman, you have joined a long list of wonderful and special people to grace the Denver March Coliseum. I'm going to ask you our 2023 Denver March Princess Lennon Paskiman to give your final welcome to everybody in the Coliseum. Lennon, if you would. How about a big round of applause for this young lady? Outstanding job she did all year long. Tanse kakio no mogumogantik, nanaskamon kape te kotia ota anuch, pisamoka ni puetan sigasun, nagochi oche hiochian, nanaskam tanawa kape to tie kakio, mistahe nanaskamon oche oma, kisagawa saimina, kawapatama, nanaskamon oma, kaugi mausquaoyan oche ota. 
Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Lennon Paskman, and I come from Sweetgrass Cree First Nations. I am your 2023 Miss Denver March Powwow Princess. It's good to see everyone here. I'm so grateful for another day that we see again. Thank you for coming to the 48th Denver March celebration. Thank you. Ikse. Hi, hi. All the way from the Treaty 6. Woo! Lennon Baskerman, one more big round of applause. That's terrible. Everybody scream! Woo! Better, better. Chris is going to give our color guard, staff carriers, and all the people down there a big introduction. So I'd like you to make some noise whenever he is done. Chris, if you would. All right, thank you. Thank you, Lawrence. This afternoon, it gives me an honor to introduce our staff carriers and flag bearers. This afternoon, presenting the Denver March Powell Eagle Staff, presented by Chad Redelk, Fargo, North Dakota. How about a big round of applause for Chad Redelk, carrying the Denver March Eagle Staff. This afternoon, Presenting the American flag, Old Glory, Sergeant Denny Medicine Bird, veteran, served in the Operation Enduring Freedom with the United States Army, member of the Cheyenne Nation. How about a big round of applause? <laughs> Presenting the flag of the great state of Colorado, Walter Crossdog, Oglala Lakota. Round of applause. And again, it gives me great honor and pleasure to introduce this honor, honor guard, color guard, founded here, right here at Denver March Powwow in 2010, the Native American Women Warriors. Let's give it up for our women warriors. Inez Sanchez Rapaho served with the Navy, retired. Arlene Willis, Army, retired. Crow Nation, all services. Micheline Bigman, Crow Nation, retired Army. Another big round of applause. Native American women warriors. Introducing the Cheyenne Arapaho Color Guard. Lena Nell, Lieutenant, served with the Army. Jennifer Achiko, served with the Army. The American flag, Tara Gover, Sar Staff Sergeant, Air National Guard, the Cheyenne Arapaho flag, Carlson Antelope, 82nd Airborne. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a big round of applause for the Cheyenne Arapaho Color Guard? And now introducing the indigen indigenous veterans of Colorado. Presenting the American flag this afternoon, served with the United States Marine Corps, John White Antelope. Presenting the Colorado state flag, served with the Army, Daniel Cove. Presenting the Eagle Staff, served with the United States Marine Corps, Tanya Goodhouse. Presenting the POW MIA flag, served with the United States Marine Corps, Jess Gonzalez, ladies and gentlemen, the indigenous veterans of Colorado. And with us throughout the weekend, we had the Red Moon Service Club from Hammond, Oklahoma, how about another big round of applause for our service club of Hammond, Oklahoma. Thank you for being here. Another, put your hands together, put your fry bread grabbers together, and make some noise for our royalty. Come forward at this time and shake hands and say thank you to the veterans.
I'd like to excuse all the dancers except all the fancy dancers. Men and women, boys and girls, stay out there. We're going to go over to Leading Arrow for your exhibition song. So Mike, Mike people, Mike persons, over to drum number 21. How we doing out there, Denver? All right, sounding good out there. Like I said earlier, you know, getting to the end of the powwow and you hate to go home, it's like going home from treatment. You know? Hate to go home. All right, leading arrow. Hit it, boys! Fancy dancers. All right, we're gonna go with some inner tribals. We're gonna stop over, start over there at Mile High, drum number 24, and come all the way down. I believe they said eight inner tribals. When we say any, inner tribals, anybody, you don't need to be in regalia, you don't even need to be native. Just come on out and dance with us down here. A mile high. And I thank Leading Arrow for that good exhibition song. Mile high, anytime you're ready. Got a beautiful cedar box up here that was found. Dancers, come on out. We're inviting all the traditional dancers, fancy dancers, jingle dress, grass dancers, chicken dancers. Anybody in the audience that want to come out and dance, come on down.
Thank you, Mile High. Standing Bear, you are on the air over three strands of barbed wire. Inner Tribal. Hey, we got Smokey's Cubs down here again. Thank you, Standing Bear. Pawnee Yellow Horse. Give us a good song, good cruising song, Southern style. Pawnee Yellow Horse, are you there? All right, don't wait on me. The last one waited, she lost out.
Downstairs, we have water for you in the front on the table there. Need some water. Thank you, Pawnee Yellow Horse. We move on down to Montana Cree. Hooka. Take it away, boys.
Thank you, Montana Cree. Catch an eagle, you're up next. Take it away, boys. Hoka. Catch an eagle. Everybody get it on the same page. Take that song up. Intertribal. Big Cottonwood Creek, stand by. Thank you. Big Cottonwood Creek. Anytime you're ready. Yeah. 
Thank you, Big Cottonwood Creek. Hey, over at Big Cottonwood Creek, those two guys with white hair, uh, make sure you get them back to the home right away. <laughs> Little Brave, you're on next. Little Brave. A lot of lost and found up here. We got a black jacket. Uh, we got a phone, purple or blue thing around it. Little Brave, are you there? No Little Brave? Colorado Crew, are you there? All right. Whoever's there, take it away. Tribal dancing. One, two. All right, thank you, Colorado crew. We move on over here to Stampede. Look ahead, boys.
All right, thank you. Stampede. Okay, before we go to the next drum, Northern Cree. Um, birthday shout out to Tina Shields from her cousin, Precious and Phoebe. Happy birthday. Northern Cree. Hooka. Don't crowd the drum too much. I'm gonna breathe that bad breath on them. Power breath on them. All right, here we go. Anytime you're ready. Let the mic people get through. Let the mic people get through. All right, here we go. Inner tribal. Northern Creek. Down on the other side. 
Have a whistle, we have a whistle.
Thank you. We had two whistles at Northern Cree drum. The first one, the whistle is a whistle carrier, Mr. Boy Lad, combat veteran, Vietnam. He's with the Green Berets, and I'm sure that he blew that whistle in honor of all the veterans that are going through hard times for good health. And have them have good health. And the second was by Julius, not afraid. The whistle is for good health for not only our newborns, those ones yet coming, for our children and for our teenagers and our men and women and especially our elders. These whistles were done in that respect to give good health. These gentlemen were given these whistles to carry that responsibility that when they hear a good song, keep that good feeling going so that the people understand that, that that's for good health for our people, all of the people in this world. So thank you, Mr. Boylad and Julius Not Afraid. All right, we, uh, we need some uh, contestants here, so listen up, all you contestants, juniors to a uh, living treasure. We need to see number 106, Junior Girls Jingle, number 104, the Junior Girls Traditional, uh, number 758, 134, 852, uh, in the living treasure, 765, Golden Age, 503 Golden Age Men's Traditional, and number 1449 Men's Grass. We need to see, see you up here. Young lady needs to see you. All right, we're going to go over here. Drum number one, heartbeat. Come to you for intertribal. Getting ready here for uh, a special. Also, break some ties. Going to our finals for our young adults. Categories. Heartbeat. Intertribal. Want to keep all of you on the floor, so come back down for intertribal. <laughs> all right, here we go with heartbeat intertribal dancing.
Heartbeat. All right, uh, at this time, we'll take a little bit of time here to have Boy Lad talk about why he blew that whistle. Hinache, Enki, Hirushka, Enki, Karagiri, Enki, Hamte, Isong Kara, Enki, Wuri, Hishide. For the benefit of many of those that may not know the meaning, the rights that are involved with the use of a whistle. There are only, perhaps, maybe in all of North America, perhaps maybe seven or eight true whistle carriers. I warn many of the young men to be very careful. This is a right that is enjoyed by certain individuals, some of us that were combat veterans, some of us that earn that right within our nation, within our society. I again tell many of the people to be very careful. This whistle, when used, brings a certain spirit to this arena. In turn, we must always pay. We give tobacco, we give a donation, to that drum. We're very honored to have the Northern Cree singers, Steve and Marlon, these young men, Randy, are all my nephews. They are perhaps the best drum group in all of North America in the Northern style. And indeed, a great honor to have them here at the Denver March Powwow. I was asked to use this whistle in honor of these gentlemen that have traveled a great distance. Speaking in behalf of my little brother here, Julius, he wishes them a safe journey to their home fire. He gives them good blessings. We thank you in turn for the spirit of that song because it brings everyone to one mind, one spirit. So again, the whistle, again used by many of our veterans, those that are served our country. I myself was a combat veteran and earned that in actual combat. And again, my nephew here was bestowed that honor over the years by his own people. So again, I'm very honored to be asked by my little brother, Julius, to accompany as again we honor Northern Cree. Jankiri <laughs> here. Thank you, boy lad. Thank you, Northern Cree, for answering the call. All right, we're going to go with one more intertribal. Lame deer. Anytime you're ready. I'm going to go into a special right after this song.
Tiny Tots, get ready. Tiny Tots. Right after this song. Cancel that on the Tiny Tots, our leader. Okay, before we go to the next drum, we're intertribal. Uh, we be going with drum number three. I'd like to read a little bit here. This banner, if you look at this banner that's hanging right in front of me. Yesterday, uh, this, uh, my good friend, my brother, Philip Whiteman Jr., shared this with me. And, uh, you know, Philip, traditional Northern Chief Philip Whiteman Jr. has just returned back to the Denver March powwow from being inducted into the North American Indian Indigenous Athletics Hall of Fame at a ceremony and banquet hosted by the Oneida Nation at Green Bay, Wisconsin. He is a two-time Indian National Finals Rodeo INFR World Champion in the Saddle Bronx and qualified 26 times holding the highest scoring right for over 30 years after that. He also became the first European Tour Champion in the PRCA Professional Rodeo Cowboy Association in Helsinki, Finland, with a score of 91, besting the champions of, uh, of the time, including three-time PRCA World Champion, Monty Hawkeye Henson. And he said, it was so beautiful and inspiring to see indigenous talent and athletics recognized and honored on this beautiful day. And Philip goes on to say, it left me speechless and, and, and humbled to be amongst the 2024 NAI AHF inductees. I wish my parents and grandparents could, be, could have been here there to celebrate this moment, and I know they are in spirit. They always encouraged and supported me. Uh, it, it is so to them, I dedicate this induction. This is Philip Whiteman, Jr. How about a big round of applause for Philip, sitting over there at Lame Deer Drum. All right. We'll go to one more in, inner tribal at drum number three. River Bottom. River bottom, are you there? All right, take it away.
All right, thank you, River Bottom. Is this the right drum? We got to check one, two. Are you ready? Are you ready for that special? We're going to clear the arena and go to a special. You know, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm going to do this special and try to do the best I can. Donina or Nina Eastman Howell was born in Aberdeen, South Dakota to Inez Brown, Flandreau, Santee, Dakota, and George Eastman, sister to Wapitin Oyate. She is the great granddaughter of many lightnings Eastman who was imprisoned after the Dakota Wars and held prisoner. He was pardoned by Abraham Lincoln along with others while 39 Dakota men were hung in the largest mass execution in the United States. Her grandfather's brother was Dr. Charles Eastman. She was enrolled with Assistant Wapitin Oyate on the Lake Traverse Reservation in South Dakota. Nina was adopted at the age of one by a Rikara Nation member, Millie Reed Chief Anderson, a nurse. Nina was raised in Alba Woods on the Fort Berthold Reservation in North Dakota. For grade school, she attended mission school in Alba Woods, North Dakota. When Nina was 15, Millie passed away and her guardian sent her to an Indian boarding school in Fort Sill, Oklahoma. After high school, Nina attended Bay Cone College in Muskogee, Oklahoma. She met her husband, Virgil Fox Howe, Pawnee, there after college. Virgil re-enlisted in the Army and then moved from Oklahoma City to Poitiers, France. Virgil and Nina had one son, Virgil, Jr., and four daughters, Verla, Carrie, Debbie, and Mary. After two years, Virgil was stationed at Fort Carson in Colorado Springs in 1962. As her husband was deployed to Korea, Panama, and Wisconsin, it was important to Nina to provide her children stability so they stayed in their home in Colorado Springs. She worked full time at Johnson Foods, a five minute walk from their home, while her children were young and changed jobs after she was widowed in 1978. She worked until her retirement in her mid-70s in edi editorial situations department for Shepherd's Citations, now known as Lexis Nexus. Her name appeared in law books as a contributor. When her daughters first started dancing, they were fancy shawl dancers, needing to learn how to make outfits, bead, and made sure her daughters were well-dressed. She jokingly called herself the wardrobe mistress it was for this reason her family wanted to host an old-style fancy shawl contest to honor her memory. The family is just about ready to go. I believe we called on... Uh, showtime for the honor song. I'm going to ask all you good people in a good way. And I know we have a lot of different ways. We have a lot of different things. We ask you in a good way as we come through with this memorial for Nina that as we go around the arena, not to shake hands, but just to join in with us. As a lot of you have known her and a lot of you have had her in your life or your grandparents' life or your parents' life. And so we ask you just to join with us, not to shake hands until after we're done. And as, as usual, I wanted to talk a little bit about that, who we're doing this for. And then I'm going to talk through this honor song about all the different things she accomplished and did. Showtime, if you would. Ladies and gentlemen, we are able to, we ask you to rise, take your hat off and pay respects to a citizen of Colorado who spent a lot of time in your great state. Hey, 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 hey,
ladies and gentlemen. The family has gifted me with some things to talk about this young lady. As a young girl, she would seek refuge in the old Memorial Congregational Church when she would get in trouble. She loved seeing it when it was moved south of Partial. I was glad that it was saved and moved. And was saddened when she learned it burnt down. Her Arikara mother, she said, was buried at that site. One summer, she and her friends picked big bags and berries. The chase boys who lived nearby came on horseback and took the berries. She went home and told her mother. They went over to their house to get back the berries. But by the time she got there, the boys' mother had already made pies out of all those berries. On special occasions, her mother would make paper flowers, dip them in wax. Her mother, Millie, had three brothers who served as scouts for the U.S. Army. She was told to go lay them on her uncle's grave. She remembered as a little girl that she was a bit nervous as there was a, still a scaffold. The loose clothes would flap in the wind. She was also aware that there was a coyote den that was close by, not to make eye contact with those coyotes. When the family moved to Colorado, she quickly found the White Buffalo Council in Denver who hosted powwows once a month. Found a new friend and relative she knew, John Fox family, and became lifelong friends with Keith and Laura Fox. They gave her the sense of comfort of home. After powwows, they would stop at Griff's Hamburgers on Broadway before hopping on 25 to head south to Colorado Springs. She always took her kids sledding was game to go down the hill herself at least once. One time she was headed for a pine tree and rolled off. She laughed so hard. One time her son as a young teen decided to run away. She said, son, if you're gonna run away, I'm gonna run away with you. So she took the horse and the three of them walked around the neighborhood until Duke got cold and said, mom, ready to go home. When her daughter Verla went to school at CU in Boulder, she often invited her friends who were other Indian students to the family home in Colorado Springs. One of these young students was Larry Brown, a San Carlos Apache. That friendship remained not only with our mom, but with our family. He was, and still is, her Apache son. Larry wanted to be here to be a part of this special day for his mother, but has had long-term effects from the COVID and is unable to travel. From the family we say, we love you, brother Larry. There are so many connections in Indian country Children, both born in Colorado, reside on the Fort Berthel Indian Reservation. Granddaughter, Janina Shell, her namesake, married Larry and worked remotely from Plaza, North Dakota. Grandson Derek has held various jobs at Four Bears in Newtown. Has been a graphic designer for many posters, many advertisements for the MHA Nation. Another connection is that her aunt, Evangeline Gillette Pipestem, married and had a family in Ponca City, Oklahoma. They would see each other often and had great love for each other. Evangeline was also an aunt to Grace Gillette, who became a good friend of the family. Nina was engaged in her community when she lived in Pawnee, Oklahoma. She was a reporter for the Pocahontas Club. Pawnee, Oklahoma, a woman's service organization. She was one of the co-founders of Mike Speak in a Tribal, which sponsored big powwows in Colorado Springs for a few years. She was a Pawnee war mother. She helped establish, she helped establish the Native American Women's Association in 
in Colorado Springs in 1985. That association provided education and cultural programs for both Native Americans and non-Native American community members. Nina was a founder and served as vice president of other board positions. She served on the Lone Feather Council Board and helped raise scholarships for Native students by Fry Bread Sales and hosting Kawa. For those of you, uh, we're going to line up here and put our stuff. We want to say that we know our grandmother, our mother, is in a far better place because we know what kind of person she was. We know the love. We know the gifts that were given to her that she shared not only with her family but every individual that she came in contact with. She is greatly missed by our family. But today, even though we honor her, this gathering of love that we have for Nina is not about her. It is for us to remember her, to take stock in what we had with our mother and our grandmother, and to give the community members of Denver and those relatives a chance to finally say goodbye in a good way. We always have ceremony. We always have different things that we do. Rikara people, we smoke the drum. There are different uh, ceremonies, combing the hair, different ones that we say that we're letting go of that person, never to forget them, but to let that sadness go away for a bit and try to remember those that have moved on, those loved ones, in a good and holy way. And so this is the start of that self-healing for our family. And we wanted to have a special for the style of dance that she loved, that her daughters danced, that our family enjoyed. And so again, we're not trying to put on anything, we're not trying to be some way, we're not trying to outdo anybody, not trying to say we're anybody, but we're humble people that come from the earth. And we've touched a lot of lives. This lady touched a lot of lives in her life. You know, one of the things for myself, the things that I try to do for people by holding this mic and talking, I was a young boy from the age of 9 to 11 and I spent a lot of time on the ranch with my grandfather and he told me a lot of things. He told me a lot of things that I didn't know what the heck he was talking about at that time. I was into Scooby-Doo and Saturday morning cartoons. That was my life. But he talked to me and he said, there's something, there's something that's going to happen in your time. I don't know what it's called. But people are taking their lives. And if you take your life, you deny all of the people that your whole life you would be able to touch to encourage, to help. And I thought, 
what is my grandpa talking about? We're in the sun for four hours. Maybe I'm a little bit delirious. But what I realized was he was talking about suicide later on. And the other thing he was talking about, because I have been holding this mic for over 30 years, and hopefully I'm still young. I still feel that way anyway. But I look at the 18 years that I've been coming to Denver, and I like to walk around, and I like to get my MC discount, and I like to visit vendors, and I like to say, hey, that's something, I like that. Let me tell people on the mic, maybe they would like to get it. I have all kinds of people of all kinds of color come up to me and say, you're doing a really good job. I want to say thank you for all the words that you said. You have encouraged me over the years. I keep coming back to hear you. And of course, I stand there as a humble man and go, I wonder what they're talking about. Somewhere on the line, I hit the mark. Most of the time, I don't even know what I'm talking about. But I try to do the best I can. And the family asked me to talk for them, to convey this feeling that they have. Don't get me wrong, they all miss her. They all wish she was back. But this ceremony that we have by having a special and memorializing is not for our grandma, our great grandma, our mom, because you know what? She's in the best place she can be. She's with her creator and all of her relatives. And she's happy. It's us that are having a hard time continuing on. It's us and our family that there are young ones born that we don't even do what grandma and mom did. We don't come to support, we don't make outfits, but we try. We try our hardest. And someday those grandbabies will look at us and say, it's you guys as grandparents that did it. And you'll sit there and say, it wasn't us, it was mom. It was mom that taught us that. It was what she learned. And so again, I tell people, this is a healing. This is a healing for all of us here. And so at this time, we need our judges, Martha Henning, Florence Brady, uh, Debbie Sosi, Jane Myers, A.J. Gillette, Dr. Denise Longemidair, Marcia Hotshire, Verla Hall, Debbie Hall, Between all of these family members, between all of these judges, they've been dancing over 457 years in three days. Two hours, one minute, that's how much experience they have. Now listen, listen family, this is only to you. Somebody gave me their phone, and before I walk away with it, I wanna give it back. I'm notorious for walking away with phones, mics, oh. We need those judges to come out. And then we were inviting, as you saw on the poster, 18 and over old style, fancy shawl. All right, all the judges are gathering. Stand by, showtime, we're coming to you. No 40 and over old style? Are you one of them? Are you one of them? Come on out. She said, I didn't bring my ID. <laughs> 40 and over. Come on out. There you go. Come on out, ladies. 40 and over. You need it. Oh, 18. I'm sorry. 18. All those young people are looking at me weird now. I changed my mind, not the family, so I'm changing it back. 18 and over, old style, all right? Those of you in Denver are watching this, back in 19, Chris, 30, 40? 
40, in the 40s. This style broke. And I'm going to use some words that maybe some of you are going to have to look up. It was scandalous. Some of you know what that word means? Scandalous. Why? Because women's feet did not leave the earth. I'm serious. So, grandmas at that time in the 40s would see naked ankles bounce by them and they'd say, oh my God, that's scandalous. But these women at that time of the 40s, they didn't care. They wanted their freedom to dance. They wanted their freedom of expression. Even before women had a time to vote, Indian women were getting their way on the reservations. And then the American woman got her way. So again, indigenous people have been doing things first for a long time, but nobody's counting. So, from there, 40, 60, 80 years now, is that right? From the 40s? 80 years. It has become what it has become. So it's kind of funny when we say old style in the contemporary sense, but it was a different dress, okay? Nobody was bouncing around, nobody was doing somersaults. It was all footwork, okay? I'm just letting you know so you have an idea. All right, I believe, I believe you're going to have to use the whole arena. And uh, you're going to get one song. And we're going to pick top 18 out of there. Okay, and then, the, and then the second song will be the finals and we'll figure out what's what. All right? I have a baby crying over here. What's going on? Somebody call social services. CPD, I got a baby crying at Northern Cree. I got a father or a grandpa not even paying attention. He's talking business over there. Feed that baby. He's giving that everything's all right. Oh, she's for sale. Oh, okay. Hard times everywhere. Holy smokes. All right, our judges are ready to go. Song number one, Showtime. Here we go.
there you have it. How about a round of applause? You see, Denver, when I use the word scandalous, you just can't imagine it. Right? You just can't imagine it. But you all look good, ladies. I, I believe they're going to pick some out, I believe, right? Judges are picking two, I believe, right now. Should be 18 all together. Top two, right? Two per judge. Now. Oh, okay, hold on then, hold on, hold on. Hold on, judges, hold on. The family said because there are so many of you out there, we want to give you all a chance. So we're going to go another song so we can get another look at you, and then we'll pick two apiece, okay? How's that, Denver? Do you like that? You get to see them all again. All right, we're going to come to showtime for song number two. Get them a little bit of water. Some of our girls, they said they, they heard only one song, so they, they used all of their moves. It's all right. We'll do it again. It's all good. They're going to see you. All right, song number two. Here we go. There you have it. Stay where you are, ladies. Stay where you are. Freeze. Everybody freeze. Remember that game when you had to freeze? Now the judges are going out. Jeez, they're out there fast, too. These judges are running. Now watch. Our judges are going to pick the ones that the other judges wanted to pick. And then the judges are going to be upset. Bring them over here with a hat. The arena director. He's over here. These ladies don't want to look at me now. Move down this way. There you go. There you go. Good job. Good job. Good job. How many got so far, Steve? How many got? Twelve? All right, we got twelve. Here comes another one. Twelve. Is this one right here? Avenel, is this one of your picks? Thirteen? Fourteen? Both of these two? Fifteen. Okay. Sixteen. This is the one that was worried coming in in the beginning. I didn't bring my ID, she said. Sixteen. Seventeen? Should be one more. 
Con him again, Steve. Maybe we con it wrong. Jenny, did you pick two? 17. Somebody didn't pick two. Uh-oh. See, I told you. There we go. Now we have 18. How about a big round of applause? Dancers, I'd like you to come and shake hands with the family and the judges. Tell the family, thank you for putting on the special. And, and tell the judges, I'll get even with you next time. No, don't do that. We just want to be positive and say thank you for the opportunity to dance in a special cool here at Denver. There we go. There's all kinds of stories, but I want to say is that our mom and grandmother through her whole life touched the lives of a lot of individuals. And I don't know why we don't look at our life this way when we're young and we believe that we're in love and they don't love us back. We just want to die. Or we did something that we can't take back and want to get rid of ourselves. And the answer is that we are fallible as human beings. We are humble as human beings. And we are going to make mistakes as human beings. Because that's how we learn. If you've ever made a mistake in your life, you don't know anything. All of us that know things have made mistakes in our lives. It's all about how you get back up and how you keep going forward. Again, we're going to go, uh, we're going to ask our uh, finalists to come on out. I believe there are 18 of them. We're going to go one more song, and then we're going to get nine. So we're going to get, uh, we're going to get one more song, and then we're going to get nine out of that group. We're going to get one more song, and then we'll have consolations and winners. Six consolations and three for uh, first, second, third. Okay. So you possibly got two more songs to do. Our judges are ready to roll. Showtime, if you would.
there you have it. The one thing that I forgot to tell you, Chris, in Denver, the one thing with the word scandalous and all of that, the one thing that you don't see in old style fancy shawl anymore is all of those old ladies used to push their head to the sky and smile like there was no tomorrow. Do you know why? Because they got one over on the men and there wasn't a damn thing they could do about it. And so every time they danced, they pushed their head to the sky and smiled. I'm always reminded when I came to Denver 19 years ago of a young lady that would dance and do that. That was the late Gladys Jefferson. She would be smiling ear to ear out there because she knew what her grandmother or herself got away with. I love that. So ladies, if you didn't get picked, you need to smile more. How about a round of applause for all these ladies? I'm just joking. Take it the other way. So, Denver, we pick nine, and we're going to give them just a little bit of a break while we do a giveaway, and then we're going to come back with a final song. So if anybody has any water, the finalists are coming through shaking hands. Come shake hands with the family right here. There you go. Good. At this time, we're going to do our gift giving. And on our, our Arikara Way, there are no clans anymore on the Arikara Way. And so there is a lady that we uh, feel real highly about that helped us when we came to this area, has been a good friend. And I told you a little bit about the relation. But all the children and the family who look up to her we believe she's the grandma, so again, we want to give a, this genuine war bonnet to Grace Gillette. I want to give this genuine war bonnet to Grace Gillette. The next, next gift we have is a genuine ego bustle that we want to give. Dennis Montoya. Dennis Montoya. You know, Dennis touched our lives through our family but I know my mother would want him to continue as he has and to have this, to continue your life in the arena and all the good feelings that you give to those that watch you dance. We want to recognize for not only the time but this beautiful venue, 
the Denver March Powwow Committee. Denver March Powwow Committee. Is the Powell Committee not here? Oh, they're behind us, okay. All right, they're coming up. We also want to recognize a lady that our family thinks highly of that family, but we believe that this young lady has done an awesome job traveling far and near throughout Indian country. And during this memorial, I know the family says my mom would appreciate and did appreciate all the princesses. And so at this time, we want to recognize Lennon Paskamin. Denver March Princess, Lennon. There's another lady that uh, we want to say that these things couldn't run without her. We want to recognize her, but at the same time, we realize she's lost somebody. And so we want to wipe the tears of Diane Buck. Good friend. Unsung hero behind the committee and the community. Also want to recognize Virginia Irving. Virginia Irving. We also want to recognize Carla Wildcat. Carla Wildcat. Want to recognize Carla? There, there she comes. Carla said, I just want to hear my name again. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> want to recognize... Geneva Mhula. Maybe a family member could come up. All right, Cheryl's going to help us out. Want to recognize Ralph Zotai. Ralph Zotai.
Ralph's coming up here. We're going to call our finalists back into the arena. Standby showtime. Our finalists, come on out. Old style, fancy shawl, 18 plus finalists. I believe there's nine of them, right, Steve? Nine of them, come on out. I only see four, five. Come on out, come on out, stand by showtime. One, two, three, four, five. Let me see, six. Missing three. One more. There she is. Quit snagging and get back in the special. You know we need gas money. <laughs> All right, are they ready? Showtime, here we go. Denver, everybody scream. Consolation winners. The last three out there will be first, second, and third. Everybody all at once go, ah, ready on the count of three. One, two, three, ah. I 
I believe these are all consolation winners. Showtime, either you messed up or me, so I'll take the blame. They wanted to keep going and until uh, they picked the last three out, so it shouldn't have been four starts. It should have, oh, so I need you to give me a couple more starts. Our judges are a little bit old. They need time to get out there. Some of them, some of them. <laughs> This is third place. If you like who gets third place, make some noise. If you like who gets second place, make some noise. Here we go. Thank you, Showtime, but I, you almost killed our dancer. <laughs> Holy smokes. I got some consolation winners here. I'm going to introduce our first consolation is Rose White Temple, all the way from The Rock. Consolation winner, Marriott Sutherland, all the way from Whitefish River, Ontario. Josie Little Sky all the way from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Lisa Hill all the way from Oneida, Ontario. Lorraine Oaks, Maple Creek, Saskatchewan. Leona Arrowite from Fort Hall. Third place, right? Third place. What I want to know is are you mad at that judge for freaking you out and faking you out and th thinking you had first and then she went and grabbed you? What would you want to say to her? I hate when that happens. I had you higher in the go around. What's your name? Sweetie Main. Lodgepole, Montana. 
Second place, Simone Paskeman, all the way from Sweetgrass. Did you catch your breath yet? Are you all right? Are you going to be okay? Your husband's back there trying to give you a mouth to mouth. Don't let him do it. Don't let him do it. Your champion comes all the way from Jumping Deer Creek, Saskatchewan. Melinda Goodwill. There's your winners. I believe we're going to take pictures and sign an album or something. I'm not sure. Danny, I'm just teasing. You always get all so serious. It's a joke. Come on. I know, I know. We'd like to have a showtime drum come up. We have something for you for rendering those songs. Showtime, you're supposed to shake hands, and when you get to these grandmas, you're supposed to give them a hug. I really, really like your singing, really. Woo, those grandmas. There you go, good job. Making those grandmas feel good. Stand by, Tiny Tots, stand by. Lennon, we need you to come back over this way. Stand by, Tiny Tots, come on out. We'd like to call you. I don't know who that is. You. Family is going to honor me with a monetary here for speaking. I want to say thank you. And again, on behalf of this family, I want you to know that arguing amongst yourself is a part of love. And if you don't have that, you don't really have anything. And they have argued and fought amongst themselves to bring the best that they could do for their mother out. And I always say it's a good thing because it releases those energies and angst that mom would have liked, mom would have loved. It's not just doing a good show, it's the process of being here. And I told all these young people behind that one day when these children of grandmas are gone, it's going to be up to you to carry forward. So it's all in what you learn and all in the process. So once again, on behalf of the family, this is what they wanted to do. They want you to enjoy your time here and have safe travels wherever you go. From the family here, this is what we wanted to do. Go it.
Drifting bull stand by for our tiny tots. All right, before we go to the tiny tots, we need to see these numbers again. Uh, number 106, junior girls jingle. Number 134, and the men's golden age traditional 503. Uh, men's grass 1449 and Golden Age women fancy jingle number 511. You need to see registration. All right, as soon as I get the high sign, we'll be going with our tiny tots. And ladies and gentlemen, I always call this category here the greatest show on earth. As soon as Chico or Steve waved their brown hand, we'll be going with the tiny top. Drifting bull. Oh, guys, sing for these little ones here. Let's give them a good song. They want to dance.
All right, how about a big round of applause for the greatest show on earth, our Tiny Tots. You want two lines or one? Oh, we're waiting here for our Tiny Tots to get paid first place. Give a shout out, happy birthday to our two boys, grandson, Kenny and Joseph. They celebrate their birthdays here at Denver March Pow Wow since birth, 12 and 17 now. So happy birthday. Also, we need these judges up here. Check in. Uh, one set of judges here. Kevin Sage, Cree, Eugene Ridgebear, Northern Rappo, Diane Yankton, Oglala Lakota, Nicole Iron, Plains Cree, Hannah Casdia, Lakota Hopi, alternate Derek Howell. We need you to check in with our head judges. They can swear you in. So nobody will swear at you when we announce the winners. Also, these are Silas's judges, Jonathan Schrader Sr., Flandreau Santi, and Kat McGibbon Navajo, Quapa, Lorenzo Clark, Navajo, Marlon Deschamp, Cree, Trey Little Sky. Also report in our head judge, Silas. We need your services at this time. Yeah, watching this. This is where it all starts with our tiny tots. I remember when Chico was a tiny tot, and man, running around out there throwing rocks at cars, so his dad put him out there in the outfit. Now look where he's at. He's watching out there, and I seen a little, little grass dancer got down real low. It looked like a ball of yarn. They're all champions. They're, got, they're getting paid first place money. And again, I'm going to acknowledge all the dads, grandpas for coming out. It means a lot to these little ones. Also, I'll just thank the moms for doing that. But as the years went by, I'm seeing more fathers come out. And I always give these advice to the families. Sometimes we're so busy going to ceremonies, trying to get to something that's real close, that's sacred. How much closer can you get to something that's sacred than spending time with your children? They just came from there. They know, they still have that connection. So maybe instead of going to ceremony, spend some time with your little ones, because that's a ceremony in itself. <laughs> Judges, if I called your name, come down, check in. Let us know when we're ready for contest. I have an advertisement the University of Oklahoma to 110th annual spring powwow Saturday, April 20th at the Lloyd Noble Center. There's a woman scrub, 1,753, sponsored by Miss Jonna Grace, Miss Indian OU at the American Indian Students Association. She's the American Indian Student Association chair. Ruben will be down there. Joaquin will be down there. O.J. Little Cook will be down there, arena directing. 12 o'clock schedule. 
all men and women categories. Check us out. All right, we also have the Southern Ute Bear Dance Powwow, May 24th, 25th. The Sky Ute Casino Resort Event Center, Ignacio, Colorado. Uh, and uh, we have our head staff here, the Miss Southern Ute Head Lady, a head man pick daily, MC, to be determined, arena director, Michael Grant, drum judge, Darren Kutch, they have a lot of good prize money. It's a golden age, adults, teens, juniors, tiny tots, drum contest, overall payout, 23,000. First to fifth place, split northern and southern. And they have all this uh, in the poster here if you want to check it out. The southern Ute Bear Dance Powwow, May 24th, 25th. You can ask you Colorado. All right, Chris, we need uh, category Golden Age Men's Traditional Dancer number 503. Come up and see us. Men's Grass, dance number 1449. Golden Age Women Fancy and Jingle 511. We need Junior Girls Jingle 106. And again, we don't have all the information on you at registration. Somehow it just slipped through our hands. So. Again, that's what's going on. Steve Marino, Chico, are we going to intertribals or what? Where are you going? All of our judges are here. Silas. Women's jingle, 18 to 39. Come on out. It's your finals. Corey Reader, get your act together. I just wanted to give somebody a hard time. 18. Uh-oh. Wombody and Sixico, we need you over here. Adult women, we're going into finals for our adults. Also, we chagla ta contest. There is no ties. That is done. Is that right, Cat? Cat Scabby Rope did that. Cat would also like to thank all of her judges. She picked them from all over Indian country, all into Canada, and some of them south of the border. All the judges that helped, she wants to thank. Thank them. Chico, the way we ended last night with those categories, we're having those finals. Yesterday, juniors, teens, living treasures, golden age had their finals. So today will be adults and senior adults, and then we're done. And nobody's excused, except the tiny tots. Those are the only ones that are excused. All right, we should have all the adult jingle into the arena. Also, I want you to stand by. I have uh, Randy and Simone up here, and they have given me the list of the finals. And just to be uh, how it turned out in numbers and how it turned out with everything, we added an extra finals. So there are six in each, not five, right? Okay. So I'm going to read them out. While all of the jingle are getting out here, Teen Girls Fancy Finalists, 207, 421, 463, 510, 457, 1340. Okay? That's six of them. Old Style Fancy Finalist, 1034, 1034, 1296. One two nine six four one six 
916-119-119-411-411-511-511-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-911-
Thank you, White River Crossing. Right after the next song here, Men's Grass, be ready. Men's Grass, right after the next song. Joaquin Listen up, Luca. Denver and all the dancers, you're gonna get a second song. So, when you get up, don't start complaining, okay? So we're gonna give you two. We don't wanna hear it. Denver, how are you doing out there? Has anybody gotten a taco? Does anybody want a taco? I want one too. Five, I want one too. four, three, two, one. Joaquin Luta, Hoka. Round of applause, women's jingle. I'm over and line up. In the meantime, men's grass, start making your way. Over there on the side, ladies, line up over there. Men's grass, make your way out. I want to thank those dancers that came out to dance for the health of it. Thank you. Men's grass. Two songs. Two songs. Song number one, Little Iron. Second song, Red Earth. Change up on the second song there, Red Earth. Men's Grass, 18 to 39. Men Judges. Be judgmental here on Sunday. All right, here we go, Little Iron, song number one, Men's Grass.
How about a big round of applause? Song number one, Men's Grass. Walk around a little bit and get it to your song number two, Stand By Red Earth. Change up. And right after this, the women, women's fancy stand by. Five, four, three, two, one. Red Earth. Hit it, boys. about a big round of applause for song number two over there to the side men's grass women's fancy you're up next make your way out next two drums koza song number one arapaho nation change up Women's Fancy, 18 to 39. Kozad, stand by. Move in, ladies, move in. Push those guys out of the way. Denver, make some noise for our ladies out here. Fancy Shaw. With two groups. Okay. Women's Jingle, 407. 863, you need to see you. No, this is for a tiebreaker. Huh? A tiebreaker. Okay, tiebreaker. Oh. 
either they're going to want to you or just cut you in half. Second group will be dancing to Denver All Nation Showtime. Second song, second group. All right, then on the side, group number two, group number one here on my left, fill in the circle. And judges, mark your ballot accordingly. Group one, group two. All right, here we go. Kozad, song number one. a big round of applause. Song number one, group number one. Get a quick drink of water. Get some HTU. Have some water in front here. Five, four, three, two, one. Next drum, Arapaho Nation.
Okay, how about a big round of applause for group number one? Okay, line up on the side over here. Group number two, make your way out. And song number one. We'll be going Denver All Nation. Song number two, Showtime. Change up. Group number two should all be out there. Waiting on our judges. Audience, are you loving it out there? Just like McDonald's, I'm loving it too. One judge having a hard time over there. No relatives. All right, here we go. Group number two, Denver All Nation. Put your hands together and let them know you love it. Group number two, Women's Fancy. Showtime, stand by. Song number two, you know what to do.
also have a tie in women's jingle. 407-863, so stand by when we get to you. We don't know when, but we'll get to you. All right, here we go, song number two, Showtime. All right, round of applause on song number two. Men's Fancy, make your way out. Men's Fancy, Bad War Cloud, Kingbird, second song, change up. Come right out, fancy, men's fancy. Stand by, bad war cloud, stand by. One of the dancers found a fingernail out there. Came loose. Oh, a earring. That is a fingernail. Two songs. Okay, I think, okay, one second song, we're going to go southern, right? Okay, we're going to go to Zotai, right? Second song. Zotai, you have second song. First song will be by Bad War Cloud. All right, here we go. Bad War Cloud, song number one. Look okay. ahead.
How about a big round of applause, song number one. Get ready for song number two. We'll be going over to Zotai, Southern Drum. In the meantime, we'd like to have the women's Southern Buckskin and Cloth be getting ready. Women's Southern Buckskin and Cloth right after this next song. Five, four, three, two, one, so time. Fancy. Thank you, Zotai. Woo! Even Corey stopped on time. <laughs> Yolanda, see how we have your debit card up here. Hey. Women, Southern Buckskin and Cloth will be going with East Coast <laughs> singers. Bad company. Chico, we're going to go to two songs with Southern Women. Okay, second song, Bad Company. Man, these guys aren't even breathing hard. In the meantime, women, Southern Buckskin and Cloth. Another round of applause for our men's fancy. Yeah.
Should be at drum number 17. Uh, judges, hold your ballot up so we can see who you, where you're at. Hold your ballot up. Judges. All right, here we go. East Coast. Beautiful. How about a big round of applause for song number one? Bad Company, stand by for song number two. And right after this one, we'll be calling out the men's 18 to 39, the Northern Traditional. All right, we're going to do a drawing here real quick for a $50 bill. You have those light blue ticket for the drums. Drum groups, check your tickets. Get your blue ticket out. Same color as Corey's toenails. <laughs> if you have ticket number 952-5896, you are a wiener, $50. 
Another one here. 9525991. You are a wiener. Come up here and see. Corey. One more time. 9525896. 9525991. You sound like a German. <laughs> All right, Brent, you're buying supper. Grandson. Five, four, three, two, one. Bad company. It's a bad song. Well, how about a big round of applause? Southern, buckskin and cloth. Thank you, bad company. Yeah. All right, men's northern, traditional. And we'll be going with song number one, Kingbird. Song number two, The Horses. Men's Northern Traditional. Eighteen to thirty-nine. All right, we're going to cut you in half or one to you. Okay. Group number two over here on my left, move aside. The rest of you move in. Okay, do we have enough? This uh, final call, last one here. 952-5896. If you have that number, come on up, singers. All right, here we go, song number one, Kingbird. Group number one.
right, how about a big round of applause for song number one, group number one, Men's Northern Traditional. Okay, uh, senior categories, uh, you're not contesting, we're just waiting for ties, in just in case. All right, uh, another ticket for the singers. Singers, check your blue ticket. 952-5923. If you have that ticket, come running. $50. One more time. 952-5923. Light blue ticket. Singers. All right, here we go, song number two, The Horses. How about a big round of applause, group number one, men's traditional. Come over here and line up. Group number two, make your way out. Song number one, Warpath. Song number two, Denver Singers, in that order. Denver kind of mix it up, same kind. One another one, just like that other one, Denver Singers. We have two groups here, so we have to wait for the men judges to get their ballots. You know, these judges, they're looking over here, but they're really looking on the other side. Tricky guys. The dancers, if they look like they're looking at your number, they're looking on the other side. All right, song number one, group two, Warpath.
All right, round of applause for song number one, group two. Get a quick drink of water, a hug, whatever you need, and we'll be going with your second song with Denver Singers. Also, Chris, uh, Chico wants to let you know that there are some ties and be ready to go uh, 407-863 in women's jingle. We have ties in junior girls jingle 999-1309. Junior girls traditional 322-323. Stand by for ties. Also, I got a blue ticket 952-5892. You win the uh, $50, I believe. Right after this song, women's northern buckskin cloth, be ready. All right, here we go, song number two, Denver Singers. <laughs> How do you like it, Denver? Let them hear you. Let them hear you. I have some winners in the lost credit card. I have some winners of lost credit cards. And I want to thank you. If, you, if you're not here to pick it up, you're going to buy me gas all the way home. Uh, Y-L-L-A-N-A Chow. I have your debit card. Sean O'Brien, I have your Capital One card. Gail Sazo, I have your debit visa. Jessica Christine Casias, I have your U.S. bank card. Jazira Martinez, I have some kind of visa debit card with a smiley face. I've got a, a Knights, Knights, Rosaline Matthews. Everybody must be rich. They don't even need their credit cards. <laughs> credit Union of Colorado, uh, Martina Mayes. I also have another Wells Fargo card with a big uh, hurricane, Jessica Bork. Jessica, I, I hope you have a lot of money. I got a lot of diesel I got to buy. Sterling Orion Pryor, I have your debit card. I got a last call for a blue ticket, 9525-892. If not, I'm going to draw another one. Chris? All right, we're going to go to Women's Northern Buckskin and Cloth. Two groups. Song number one for group number one will be going with Young Sky Nation. We should be at drum number 23. I'm going to use northern drums. All 
All right, take it away as soon as you're ready. Young Sky Nation. Mile high, stand by, second song, change up. How about a big round of applause? Song number one for group number one. Chris, I believe right after this we're going to break our ties. Is that right, Chico? 
Junior Girls Jingle 999, 1309. Junior Girls Traditional 322, 323. After the Southern Straight, we'll do that. All right. Got another ticket, 952 5879. I got blue tickets. I got green money to give away. It's St. Patrick's Day. Nobody wants the money. Denver, how are you doing? Do you want the money? Yeah, Notice they kind of didn't know whether to cheer or not. They were kind of scared. Four, three, two, one. Mile high. a big round of applause for group number one. Second song, line up ladies. Group two, make your way out and we'll be going with Montana Cree and Catch an Eagle. Drum number 27 and 28. Kelly, I need you, Kelly. Golden Aid Men's traditional, 949-1281. I have a tie. I have a tie. Also, we have a couple of credit cards that got picked up. The group two, you should be out there. Right after group two, we'll be having a Southern Straight Men's. Men's Southern Straight. We're coming back to the Southern Drums. Number two. All right, here we go. Montana Cree, song number one. Group two. I have a going? winner on the blue ticket. I might have to draw another one. Should be at drum number 27. Nine, five, two, five, nine, eight, seven. We're at drum group 25. 
Are we at 25? Sorry, my guys, uh, 25. Standing bear. Sorry. applause for song number one group two thank you standing bear again we have some ties that we're gonna break after chicken dance right after this we have the southern street men southern street stand by Nine five two five nine eight seven. It's a blue ticket. It's worth fifty dollars. If you have it at the end of the song, I'll give you to the end of the song, and then I'm gonna draw another one. I got a lost phone up here, and uh, must have just charged it. And then I got a res phone up here that you can barely see anything, and everything is cracked on the screen. And the minutes are paid up, but I can't get a new one for six months. So I got that up here too. All right, here we go.
All right, round of applause for group number two, Women's Northern, Buckskin and Cloth, Southern, Men's Southern, Straight. While we're going down the line, I need to see dancer number 1257, Living Treasure, 1257. I need to see a Golden Age, Women's Northern, Southern, Traditional, 1252. Need to see you up here. I'm going to draw a last ticket for $50. Last four numbers on the blue ticket, 5922. 5922. All right, two songs. Song number one, leading arrow. Song number two, pool metal jacket. First one, straight. Second one, change up. Second one, trot song. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Should be at drum number 21. Southern. Also, Golden Age Men's Traditional 949, 1281, you're in a tie. All right, here we go. Leading arrow. Song number one, Ben Southern Street. All right, we're going to go right next door for your second song. Full metal jacket, and you know what to do when we call on you. And 
right after this, we go with chicken, Perry chicken dance. All right. Chicken dancers, be ready right after this category. Five, four, three, two, one. Full metal jacket. How about a big round of applause for song number two, Southern Trot. Over and line up. All right, men chicken dancers, make your way out. And we're going to go back to drums. Northern drums here, Catch an Eagle and Big Cottonwood Creek. Be coming to you unless otherwise different. Chris, I got another number for the drums. Five, nine, eight, one, blue tickets worth $50. Five, nine, eight, one. Now we're gonna break some ties after chicken dance. If you heard your number, stand by. All right, let's give our men Southern Street another big round of applause for the finals here this afternoon. Good luck, boys. Hope there's no ties. All right, here we go with the chicken dancers. First song, Catch an Eagle, Hookah.
big round of applause. Song number one, Perry Chicken Dance. All right, get ready for your song number two. We'll be going with Big Cottonwood Creek. They want original, not crispy. Get a good song ready. Right after this, we're going to break the ties. All right, here we go. Big Cottonwood Creek. a big round of applause. Men's Perry Chicken Dance. Whee! Thank you, Big Cottonwood Creek. And now we're going to be going into the ties. One more, one more. One more, one more. We're gonna go over to Northern Cree. Get back out there, boys. We're gonna go to Northern Cree. We want one more. We're gonna give you one more. Denver, do you want one more? Denver, if you want one more, scream. All right, you're gonna get one more. How many of you snagged Saturday Night Live? How many? Make some noise if you snagged last night. Make some noise if you didn't snag. You are officially leftovers. All right. We're just about ready to go, Northern Cree. 
turn us up and turn us on. For those of you looking at us in uh, DePaul, Manitoba, Thunder Child, Maple Creek, we want to say welcome. Those of you in Japan, Germany, move around, move around, little, 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 little. There you go. Woo, chicken dancers. Northern Cree, here we go. scream those of you that didn't snag I purposely didn't tell you that these chickens are so powerful if they look you in the eye you could become pregnant no not if you're a man come on sick why does everybody got to go there we're going to go to ties. I need Junior Girls Jingle, 999-1309. I need Junior Girls Traditional, 322-323. And again, everybody is not excused. You know what? As an announcer, there are some sexy things that happen to you. And those sexy things are when young women come up to you and say, can I get undressed? And I look at them and my mind goes every which way and the good Catholic boy comes out and says, no, we're waiting for ties. 
But now that I've gotten this age, it's only living treasures and golden age women that come up to me and say, can I get undressed? I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I just say, no, leave all your clothes on because there could be a tie. So it's a whole realm of things. So you got to watch what you say. All right, I already have out there 1309. Is that right? 1309, all right, I'm looking for uh, 999. No? No 999? If not, the tie is over. 1309 is out there. This is Junior Girls Jingle. 1309 is out there. I'm looking for 999. 999. Yeah, sound like a German guy out here. 99. For all those Germans, I apologize. They used to say, Speaking Sie Deutsch. No? I guess you have to be a Hutterite or an Amish to understand. I'm going to give you three seconds, 999. Three. Somebody scream if they're coming down. Two. One. Chico says you have to be ready. We've been calling all afternoon. 1309. Put that on a ballot. That's the winner of the tie. We move right on down the line. Junior Girls Traditional. 322. 323. 322. Is that you? 323. Did you guys ride in the same car together? Or you just were behind each other when you registered? Two push-ups. We're going over to drum number. Back to rotation. Thank you for your credit card. I will use that all the way home. Kathleen Kenzenora. I have your Aurora Federal Credit Union visa. And because it's a credit union, I know you have some money. That's a lot of diesel on the way home. Little Brave, are you there, boys? Two starts. Here we go. Denver, make some noise for these two little girls. Come line up. 
I want to say thank you to you two girls. Whoever raised you, raised you right. You came over and said, I want to dance against you. Good luck. They shook hands. They're walking in stride to stride. They're going to stop right there. What all of you don't know is she said in that meeting, she didn't say good luck. She said, if you win, it's your turn to buy McDonald's. And the other one said, if you win, we're going to get a Whopper. Juniors and teens after this are excused. No ties. How about a big round of applause for those two young girls? I'm going to another tie, 407-863, women's jingle. 407-863, standby golden age men's traditional. Tie, 949-1281. This is... What's your number? 407 is out there. I'm looking for 863. 863. Is that you, 863? Okay. Stand by, we're going to Colorado Crew. Are you there, boys? Two starts. Put your tacos down. We're going to rock one. Woo! All right, we're ready to go. We have our judges. Colorado Crew, you are on the air. that Chico when you stick your hand out like that. Could be hold them back, could be stop in the name of love, could be anything. Yeah, shakes your head when you do. Man's golden age, traditional, 949-1281, come on out. Nine four nine one two eight one. If you've been with us, Denver, if you've been with us all Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I had a couple that were sitting up here, and I, I got to meet them. And they said to me, you're always talking about divorce or single. How come you don't talk about uh, married people? I said, because I was married one time and I'm divorced, so I don't talk about it anymore. Done the, been there, done that. He said, could you tell everybody we've been married for 24 years? I said, yeah. I'll tell everybody you've been married for 24 years. I said, but tell me the truth. How long were you living in sin before you got married? He said, two years. So you've been really together with her 26 years? He said, yep. I'm looking forward to another 26. So again, all you people that are married, if you're married, make some noise. I want to say whatever you're doing, keep doing. I want to say that you're doing a good job. 
I also want to say that if you have kids, remember to have date night with your significant other. People always laugh at me when I say this because you were a couple first before you had kids. And if you want to remain a couple after your kids leave the nest, you need to have date night. Otherwise, you're two strangers, your kids are already uh, done, and you're ready to move on. We're coming right on next door to drum number Stampede out of Rapid City, South Dakota. Hook up, boys. Two starts. It. Thank you, Stampede. We know they're old. You gave them the tail. I like that. Two and a half. It's good. Respect. Now, I believe, uh, Chico, that concludes, unless somebody else brings me a tie. I think that's it for now. We're going to go into uh, Paschim and Special, I believe. Before I turn the mic over, I want to talk about our sponsors, our Eagle Plume sponsors. These are people that have given us $500 or more to the Denver March uh, celebration. Daughters of the American Revolution, Flying Man Family, Sandra and Dennis Fox, Denver Indian Family Resource Center. Again, we want to say thank you to them. Without anybody's contribution, none of this could be possible. want to thank you, Eagle Feather sponsor. This is $1,000 plus. Virginia Quintana family, Grace Gillette, Ralph Zotai, Elias Hermeni Horses, uh, Donina and Duke Howell family, John Poncho Brady, Larissa and Lara Nobrade, Kaiser, Permanente NAPA, Denver Zoo, Meow Wolf, CSU Spur. And then we have our Eagle Fan sponsors. Eagle Fan sponsors are the one that have given $5,000 or more to the Denver March celebration. Want to thank Colorado Access, Visa Native, Native Alliance Tribes and Indigenous Voices Everywhere, Tigna Foundation. We want to thank First Nations Development Institute, our Eagle Staff sponsors, $10,000 plus, Danae Designs, Lennon Paskaman. Our War Bonnet sponsors, $25,000 plus, that makes the Denver March celebration uh, a possibility. Community Acts Funds, SCFD Denver County, Denver Arts and Venues, and Nine News. Those are our vendors. How about a big round of applause for all of our vendors? You too can become a vendor. Also, before I turn the mic over, I wanna let everybody know the finalist in the Teen Girls Fancy 
207, 421, 463, 510, 457, 1340. And Lennon Paskabin, Denver March Princess, old style fancy finalist, 1034, 1296, 416, 119, 411, 511. In the Lennon Paskabin, fancy finals, 18 plus. 854-1280-415-156-1335-1417. Those are the finalists. And I believe I am turning the mic over to uh, Ruben Littlehead to conduct this special. If you don't recognize Reuben, Reuben is in the traditional Irish garb. Check one, two. Is this mic on? Ladies and gentlemen, let's give Lawrence Baker and Chris Eaglehawk Sr. a big round of applause. Your MCs for the weekend. Yeah. It's the, uh, it's the, the toothless, right? Who's the toothless? Uh, and, uh, and then who's the ruthless? Okay, so the ruthless and the toothless. <laughs> Yeah, that's Chris's. That, you named yourself, right? You did that a couple years ago, so that's not me. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to our final day of powwow here in the Denver Mile High. And uh, I know Lawrence asked you a while ago, but is everybody having a good time? All right. We are in the final phase component of the uh, fancy shawl specials old style specials also the teens we're honoring our outgoing princess here miss lennon paskaman an outstanding job throughout her reign so let me be the first if not one of the announcers or people to to acknowledge and recognize her travels her endeavors all of her travels, ladies and gentlemen. So Grace Gillette, Diane Buck, Larissa Nobrade, all that represent Denver March. Lennon did an awesome job. I've, I've seen her in Canada. I've seen her throughout most of the powwows that I announce. And uh, she don't even register during royalty anymore because she knows I know who she is. And she knows that I'm going to give her the big shout out. Sometimes I announce her at the end, right, Lennon? I give her the whole space and I announce her at the end just to give her that love, give her that, that special recognition because Randy's her dad. Hey. But you know, Lennon, I, I, I've seen you guys, I've seen you all over. And Pendleton, like two, two weeks ago, just you and your dad are up there. And it was an honor to uh, see you amongst all the other royalty. And then, with Lennon, I'm just going to go ahead and say it, she brings Northern Cree to the mile high. How about a round of applause for Northern Cree? Steve, it's good to see you, Steve, Joel, Marlon. Gentlemen, we're going to go into the... Uh, You know, earlier I was visiting with her, with her papa, or with her father here, Randy, and I'm going to go ahead and mention her name because I asked if it was okay. 
And Randy said it would be okay to mention her name, but I know a lot of you knew the late, great, one of the original fancy shawlers of the, of the circle, of the Absalica, of the Crow Nation. And I want to recognize and, and mention the late Gladys Jefferson. Some of you knew her. Some of you knew who she was. You knew her style. Uh, just a short recognition some years ago, it was Gladys and her family that helped encourage and bring Lennon back into the circle. Because as a parent, we have children and they reach a certain age and I don't know if it's peers or pressure or whatever it is, but it was Gladys and Janelle, Acorn, Pow Wow, and some of that family that put together a special for her and sponsored a special for her to encourage her and to show her that she's loved and that she's very well supported. And one of the attributes that Lennon will carry to honor the late Gladys is when she dances, she smiles. And those of us that remember Gladys, she did a lot of smiling while she danced. She, her, her double beat, and her style, she always had a smile. It communists. Hey, oh, hey. Maneka, it communists. That means to smile and to enjoy yourself. But uh, as I'm waiting for the list, we're going to be announcing the finalist, and we're going to ask the teens, teenagers first. So, teen dancers, come on in. We're going to take care of the dance specials. And then the, the honor song and the giveaway after. Bubba Srain, Hassanan et Nahan, come and dance with the teens. You've been invited by Lennon and family just to dance and enjoy yourself. Okay, here are the teen girls finalists. Dancer number 207. Raise your hand, wave to me. All right, is that Elani? All right. Dancer number 421. 421, all right. Thank you. Number 463. 463, number 510. 510. Number 457. All right. I believe that's Morning, that's Red Star, that's Shandeen. Four, five, seven, one, three, four, zero. One, three, four, zero, we're good to go. So we have six finalists, right? You're going to be dancing to three songs, okay? By Northern Cree, did I tell you that? All right. Are we good to go? Judges, are we good to go? Also, we want to acknowledge and recognize Jamin and Shannon, Paskaman. It took them three planes, two cancellations, one train, one Greyhound, one Uber, one Lyft, and then an Amish-style horse and cart just to get here. Z. Not that bad. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been asked to relay these uh, first song that was composed by her dad, Randy. And it talks about 
the way Lennon dances and the, her energy and her, her spirit. And then it also talks about uh, her birthday. When she turned nine years of age, Randy made this song for her. And this is her uh, a special birthday song. The second song, I'll talk about that with the crow hop. Okay? Bubba, you've been asked to, to join in and dance with the girls. I know it's a six finalist, but, uh, but Lennon wants to honor you and encourage you in a good way too, babe. Okay? Because Lennon is Randy's princess, and you're my princess. Northern Cree. Nigamuk. Nigamuk boy sick. Here we go. Good luck, ladies. Good luck. for song number one. Water people, you got 15 seconds and counting. You know, I also want to acknowledge uh, the other two dancers that gave me a little stump on their name. I believe it's Rihanna, right? Rihanna or Rihanna? Right, Rihanna Bird? Okay. And then the other one over there in the red, I believe that's Talia. Talia, right? Robertson, right? I got it. I remember. With the help of Tori. <laughs> and the help of uh, Tiff, too, I believe. This second song is a crow hop, and it's also composed by Randy Paskman. This is the song that talks about Gladys and the way that she encouraged the dancing princess. Northern Cree, song number two.
smile. Time a round of applause for song number two. Beb, we'll have you go shake hands with these girls and then uh, we're gonna let them finish out that final song. So come shake hands with Morning Grace. Yep, shake hands, to tell them good luck. This third song was, was not composed by Randy. Oh, it was composed by Randy, okay. so. All songs are composed by... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, this third and final song for the teens, on behalf of Lennon, on behalf of the family, they want to say thank all the participants, all the girls that came out and, and, and participated, but we narrowed it down to the top six. We want to encourage you to, to, to keep dancing, to keep practicing, to keep learning. But we're, we're very happy that the top six here have come to showcase their style to come and showcase their moves and, and represent their families proud. Bobby, leave me hanging. All right. Here we go. Song number three Northern Cree. The N O R T H E R N C R E E. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cheer them on, make some noise!
of applause one more time. Come on over here, ladies. Come on over here. Line up for the judges. Man, that was deadly, Northern Cree. Deadly. D-E-D-L-E-H. Deadly. So while you're lining up, girls, if you look to the rack over there, there's a fully beaded outfit to the champion. Fully beaded outfit. To all, or is it the winners of each category of the old style, the fancy show, and the teens will each receive a fully beaded outfit. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? That's pretty awesome, huh? Man. Old style finalists, come on into the arena. Dancer number 1034. Dancer number one, two, nine, six. Old style. Dancer number four, one, six. Old style. Dancer number one, one, nine. Old style. Dancer number four, one, one. That's the number I call for information, right? Four, one, one. Dancer number 511. Dancer number 511. Kaya, what number are you? Kaya is out here. She is dancer number 1034. 411 is here. Can't see that far. Dancer number 1296 is here. Dancer number 416 is here, Josie. 411. Is that you on the end? Okay, 511. Rose, 511. Okay, we should have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're all ready to go. All right, we got Rose, we got Kea, we got, is that Tamia? Mia? Mia on a kill spot. Okay, Lisa, Melinda, and Josie, we're good to go. Northern Cree, we're ready to go for song number one, Old Style. Old Style. Like Snoop Dogg said.
So number one for these old style dancers. Water people make it quick. We got 15 seconds or after I'm done reading this. I have an excerpt here on behalf of Marlon Deschamps. Marlon composed this song and it inspired him to create this double beat for the late Gladys Jefferson. He met Gladys decades ago at Post Falls Powwow where she adopted the Northern Cree and she became a mother to Northern Cree and all the singers, taking them as her own. From there on, every new member became her adopted son. While composing this tune, all he pictured was Gladys' dancing to the awesome Post Falls sound system and to all the old style dancers to remember Gladys in a good way. Thank you, Marlon. Let's hear the double beat song for song number two. Northern Cree, we're coming to you. Double B. One more time for the old style. Uh, we see uh, Cass, Cass B. Abby out there too, coming out representing that Crow style and her, the late uh, Gladys. Thank you, Cass B. Holds the enemy Abby. All right, we got to change some batteries, so we're going to go ahead and talk for a minute here. This will be your third and final song, ladies. In the 18 and older, old style, and you have to dance in one category or the other. Is that right? Yeah. Somebody asked me, what's the difference between old style and contemporary? Well, see, the contemporary old style, or contemporary fancy shawlers, they get up, they point their fingers, and they get mad at their husbands. Old style, they don't do any of that. They just give him that look. And he knows when to behave. Right, Rusty? Segi? Old style. Yeah. Song number three, Northern Cree. N-O-R-T-H-R-E-N-C-R-E-E. -E.
Put your hands together one more time for the old style finalists. Come on over here, ladies, and line up. Come and line up for the judges. And thank you once again, Northern Cree. You got three more songs, Steve. <laughs> here are the finalists for the 18 plus Fancy Shaw. And we're going to call dancer number 854. Come on into the arena, dancer number 854. Dancer number 1280. 1280. Dancer number 415. Dancer number 415. Is that Lara over there? Lara, all right. Iatosh is out there. 156, dancer number 156. We are coming into the arena now. Finalist number 1335. 1335. Dancer number 1417. Dancer number 1417. We should have six out there. We have uh, Wakila out there as well. Tungshi, one, two, three, four, five, and six. We have six finalists. Same format, ladies. You're going to get three songs. Three songs by Northern Cree in a similar style. I'm not too sure exactly. McNabb. Right? Right? Kerry, right? So we got Kerry, Wakila, Tungshi, Iatosh, Lara, and. Or is that Oktisha? Oktisha Roberts. These are the top six fancy shawlers in the world, ladies and gentlemen. Get your phones ready. Somebody go live, and here we go, Northern Cree. We're going to see who has the fastest pair of size six moccasins. With the blinged out moccasins, here we go, Northern Cree. Okay. Yeah. Water people, make it quick. Make it quick. Sons, boyfriends, best friends, 
Moms. Oh. Oh, Brian to the rescue. All right. You know, I said we're going to see the fastest pair of uh, size six and a half, maybe. Yeah, every now and then, one of these ladies uh, rocks a size eight moccasin, but that's all right. It's blinged out with tri-cut beads. Czechoslovakia. Are we ready to go? Lara, is it lastly? Okay, got it right. All right. Here we go, song number two, Northern Cree. Okay, we're gonna... That's right, ladies and gentlemen, cheer them on. That was song number two, foot slide. A little tricky. A little tricky. Just like uh, Run DMC said, it's tricky. Tricky, 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 tricky. Stand by there, dancers, water people, make it quick. We're going to come back to song number three. We're going to find out who has the fastest pair of moccasins. And speaking of moccasins, I had my son grab my new pair of moccasins here so I can rock it out this third song. Shout out to Tia Waters. Oh. Or is it Tracy? Tia, I believe. Tia Waters. Chico, I'm looking at you because I started that song a little bit early there. And, uh, Northern Cree wasn't quite ready, so I'm looking at Chico Her Many Horses, ladies and gentlemen. One of the finest, knowledgeable, good-looking, handsomest arena directors in all Indian country. Chico Hermini Horses. He gave me $20 to say that. Here we go. Song number three, Northern Cree.
Hey, 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 so many words you can say that was deadly that was wicked that was crazy that was awesome uh-huh yeah Woo. d e d l e h deadly a w w s u m awesome w i k k i t wicked And like Bart Pawaki says, everybody scream. Shout out to Bart Pawaki. Ruben, there are no ties in any of the categories. Everybody is excused, even the tiny talks. Did you guys hear that? There are no ties and no more contests. Everyone's excused. You know, one time at the Gathering of Nations in Albuquerque, uh, Lawrence, we had a tie in the big Indian nose contest. No ties in the big Indian nose. I'm still the champ. I got the title. Yeah. Northern Cree and Steve Wood, in the Cree language, they say hi hi, right? Hi, hi, thank you. Awesome songs, gentlemen. Ahu. We need your numbers visible, girls. We need your numbers visible. You know, on behalf of Lennon and the family, they want to thank each and every one of the dancers, they want to thank the, the drum group as well. And we also want to acknowledge the Denver Powell Committee for selecting her. And we're going to go through some of the gift giving and the honor song here. And we will be recognizing some names. We will be recognizing some people that have supported from day one. We wanted to include on behalf of the Jefferson family as well. Want to make note of uh, that contest that I was talking about earlier. It was the late Gladys Jefferson and family that volunteered and, and made, got all the championship coats, jackets made for that special. And as I understand it again, I believe Pow Wow and Acorn and uh, uh, some of the other ones have come together to sponsor some jackets as well again this weekend. And it is always done without no hesitation. It's done because the love 
is there and they want to demonstrate it through the, through the Paskerman family. Randy and Tiffany have been in the arena for many years and we know their children. Each and every one of their children exemplify some of the, the good conduct and the, the powwow etiquette. You know, earlier when Simone took second place in that old style special, I saw her and her dad, Randy, walk down the side and, and give some money to the drum. And those are the kind of teachings that Randy instills in his children. And so being so here, as Lennon is the outgoing princess, some of her, her teachings and her ethics that she was taught passed down. And it comes from a long line of teaching on both the Cree, the, the Apache, and the Navajo uh, upbringing. This afternoon time, we have her godparents here, Mr. and Mrs. Poncho and Tuki Brady. They accepted to be godparents some time ago. As I understand it, in the Apache way, they bring a plume around four in the morning and they present it to them and if they accept it and they, they pick it up, they take that responsibility on as godparents. And for those of you that are godparents out there, godparents serve almost the same level and they, they, they serve as the same purpose as our, our biological parents. And both Ponchi and Tuki, they're very proud of Lenin. And they're very proud of the Paskaman family as uh, they also call upon Northern Cree uh, many a time to sing for uh, John of Grace and Tori and, and all the different specials that we have. And also Northern Cree is coming down to OU, Norman, Oklahoma, April 20th. Steve, Marlon, we'll see you down there in uh, Norman, Oklahoma, home of the uh, Oklahoma Sooners. And speaking of which, Boomer! Boomer! Texas! Oh, okay. I'm not even from uh, Oklahoma or a Sooner fan, but I, I like to do that part. Yeah. April 20th, come down to Norman, Oklahoma. John of Grace is the president, and we're going to rock on over there, me and Joaquin and Northern Cree. This honor song, as we parade in with the scarves on the sticks here, uh, Jared Massey, he shared with me some of the Apache ways, how they do things back home. This scarf signifies that that family, that clan, the Apache are coming to bring gifts. They're coming to bring good fortune, abundance. They're coming to bring good energy and prayers. These scarves here, they, they'll, they'll soak up all this good energy, the, these songs, these words, these, these expressions made. And then all of the men will follow in behind with blankets and gifts. Each one of the family members are going to carry a gift, Apache style, and they're going to parade it in. Not to be confused of showing off or anything, but it's a way to signify that the love and support for the honoree, Lennon Paskerman. It's a way to show the people that they put love and appreciation, time, energy, money. They put some good thoughts and feelings in these gifts, whether it's blankets, scarves, maybe material, maybe money, whatever it is, jewelry, something along those lines. They want to show the love and support for Lennon for the job she did throughout her reign. The song that's going to be rendered here this afternoon time, Northern Cree is going to utilize a song that was composed by the late grandfather of Lennon, Randy Paskerman's father. This song, it, it, it's been sung from different drum groups like Showtime. They sang it at Gathering with Marlon that time, remember? And then at the same time, this song here it has a special meaning for the Paskerman family. And they're going to ask each and every one of you, to, to stand and rise, even if you can't make it down to the floor, if you could stand where you're at, remove your headgear in a good way. And we're going to honor Lennon. We're going to honor her godparents. We're going to honor her, her sisters, her aunties, her uncles. We're going to honor her brothers and sisters, her grandmas and grandpas. We're going to honor those that, that put her up, lift her up to show she's a princess. 
to show that she's loved. So this afternoon time. You know, as I made mention before, when your daughter or son becomes a royalty and represents a celebration, maybe it's a small powwow, maybe it's Denver March, maybe it's gathering a nation's misindian world, whatever it is, the family will come together and other family relatives will pull together to show support. And throughout one year's reign, the family saves, they, they make things like the beaded outfits that are going to be given away today. They make things in preparation. And, and that's our Indian way. That's the way we do things to, to give back to the circle. Because once our honoree is honored and lifted up, we got to keep things in balance. We got to keep things in balance because that's the way it is in our ways. Not only to to keep things in balance, but to demonstrate how much she's loved and appreciated, how much work it goes into. And then at the same time, the, the, the power committee, you represent your daughters, your sons. Maybe they're a little warrior, a little brave, a little scout. We have a lot of royalty. They serve as ambassadors. They go out to other powwows, and then they promote your celebration. They go out there, and they get the microphone sometimes, and they get to introduce themselves in their language or maybe what they're doing. Maybe they're a student. Maybe they're in high school or college. And then they get to tell you who they represent. Then they get to invite you to the 48th Annual Denver March. Come and, and check it out and, and join me as my family sponsors specials. Stuff like that. So with that being said, if you have a loved one, if you have a young princess or a little warrior scout brave, something along those lines, be sure to, to do your best. Sometimes a lot of families don't have a lot of money, a lot of things, but communicate with your family. Have your family pull together, and, and, and that way you can give back in a good way. But here, the Paschima family, they, they're very proud of Lennon. I know that. And, it, and it's, it's shown through the song making. It's shown through her outfit. It's shown through her, her smile when she comes into grand entry. It's the expression from our kids that satisfy us as parents. When we see our young ones smiling and laughing, enjoying themselves. I know Poncho and, Poncho and Tuki, they, they, uh, they have their young ones and now they're getting older. We was laughing about that yesterday that that they're getting older now and they're, they're kind of starting to travel on their own. But that doesn't mean we don't worry. That doesn't mean we still kind of have other family members out there looking out for them. And that's the, that's the same way it goes. So, so even though uh, Rylan and Cheyenne, because they're older now, they're, they're still babies in, in Poncho and Tuki's eyes. So Rylan, you're still baby. <laughs> Are we good? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to please stand and please rise. Please save your handshake and hugs until after the song is done. Honor song, Northern Cree.
Bahamas. Bahamas. My night at the Lennon Pass, I'm in Ashby. Nishi Ekla, Mane Ekla. No, Ko En Hatsa, the Niho En Han. Mane Hatsa, the Poncho, Tuki, Brady, Ashby. Randy, Tiffany, Paskim, and Ashby. Take Mane Hatsa, and Ashby. Hot man, I pivot the money at the Denver March Powell celebration on. Up on the ice, man. Up on the moon high in the Now, now what is stand? Now what is stand on the Brady Paskim and family? Yeah, ice man, I go now. Let the Paskim and head on the ice. Now my aim is there now. Oh, Nyan, what them? What them on the echo now? Come on in. Let's dance. Come on in and dance with the family. Dance behind the family. We honor the outgoing Denver March Power Princess, Lennon Paskerman. One time around in the arena. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for standing. You may be seated. <laughs> Family, friends, and relatives. At this time, Lennon, if you would, come on over here. We're going to have you uh, stand before Mr. Kelly Grant and Ms. Uh, Gloria McGilvery. We're going to ask your kind attention at this time as we're going to go to a prayer from our individuals that have been called upon to render a prayer for Lenin at this time. If I could have your patience, your reverence, please.
Reuben, while we're doing things, I'm going to ask those children to get off of the tripod. I'm going to ask the children on both sides to get off or get away from the tripod. Thank you. Thank you, Lawrence. At this time, I do believe the prayer has been uh, complete on behalf of Kelly Grant and Gloria McGilvery. And uh, the family wants to thank these two for accepting the tobacco and rendering a prayer for Lenin. You know, in some of uh, the, the traditions, uh, especially when I go up north, they have this style of, uh, of honor, and then they stand in the front, and then they pray, and they smudge down, and then they, all those that are still standing in line, you can come on through now, and follow in with the family and shake hands with Kelly and Gloria. Randy also wanted me to relay and express and to thank Lawrence, Lawrence Baker for announcing for the family. Uh, he looks at her as his niece and, they, and, they, and Randy's kids, they call Lawrence uncle like that in that old, old uh, way, good way. And last year, remember, Lawrence, when we announced the new princess and when uh, Lennon got selected and, the, man, the whole crowd and the tears were shed and, and um, Randy came over, you know, he said, well, here we go, we're going to start our reign. And it, it was during that time, too, he, uh, he kind of whispered to me and shook my hand and said, you better be here next year, too, to help us out. And... Uh, so I want to thank Randy for that, and uh, Randy and Tiffany, we've, we, we've known this family for many years, my kid's mom and I, Matilda, and we watched our kids grow up in this arena. We watched Jamin and Simone and Therian grow up with Sonny and Junior, and they, they're big WWE fans back in the day, and uh, they would all WWE wrestle, and the best thing I like about it was Simone would jump right in with the boys too and wrestle, so... Uh, and then we got to watch our next, next younger ones come on up, like my princess, Randy's princess. And next thing you know, man, they're princesses. They're getting taller. They're getting older. And then um, I don't know if they're getting older or we're getting older. That's well, not us. Okay. But Randy said, I just want to acknowledge Lawrence in a good way. And also Chris, they want to acknowledge you for being a long time MC here. All the good words you share with the people and the family. Randy and Tiffany, they, they look up to a lot of these older announcers like you, Chris, because you carry on that language. You're a fluent speaker in that Lakota language. Just like Randy, he's a fluent speaker in Cree language. And, and every now and then, when I'm up north and I hear these Cree women talking Cree to me, I'm not too sure what they're saying, so I, I ask Randy what they're saying. Remember? Hey, just kidding. But anyway, want to thank um, the Denver Powell Committee for acknowledging them. And uh, it's been one year's time. It kind of flew by. And, and uh, Randy said, you know, I'm, I'm just a song composer. A lot of it is all the work from his wife and from Jolyn, his, uh, her sister, uh, from uh, uh, Jonna. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be probably calling a bunch of names, but all these ones that help out in more ways than other, like uh, Sean and, and Lorraine and, and uh, all these individuals that have a helping hand, whether it's making stuff or donating a blanket, donating a, a star quilt, something along those lines, the uh, Paskima family is very appreciative and thankful. And then to the Northern Cree drum, the family of Randy, I just want to thank you for making your way down here, making your way from, from Muscoochies from a long ways, and Steve, he has to leave Hilda at home, and then, uh, so Randy says, thank you, Steve. Joel, 
for, for you guys for coming on over here and providing the music in a good way. Oh, Hilda's here. Where's Hilda at? Oh, right there. There she is. Yeah. You know, uh, earlier I talked a little bit about the godparents, Poncho and Tuki. You see on, on Lenin's Apache side, they carry a long line of tradition and culture. And it was during Lenin's coming of age ceremony down in, was in Arizona? In Arizona that time, it, her Apache family, they stepped up and they they took care of things for the family. And uh, I, wanna, I wanna thank uh, Jared, right? Jared Massey. He come on over here and he helped kind of explain some things to me about how the Apache way, how they bring in the scarves. And during that time of coming of age, we have different coming of age ceremonies. And when those ceremonies take place for our young one, it's about teaching them uh, womanhood, it's about teaching them ethics and, and, and ways of a traditional woman. And with that being said, uh, the Paskaman family is very appreciative of all the Apache side for that you do and all that you did and that you're going to do. I, uh... You know, Randy said... Uh, he recently, right, recently found out through some research, his great, great, great grandmother, three greats, two greats, two great grandmothers some years ago, during a time of relocation, time of movement, they came from that area, his late grandmother, she was Apache, and they made their way up kind of north to Rocky Boy area, and then that was where she, they met some of the Cree, right? Kind of married into and, and, and became within the Cree family. So Randy, a lot of his family comes from the Chippewa Cree and Rocky Boy area. And then the next generation or so went up into Canada, up in the Sweetgrass area. Musquatchies area. So great-great-grandmother Apache. Tiffany, great-grandmother Apache but you're not related. <laughs> Take that mic away now. <laughs> yeah. I know. All these family and friends and relatives that come through and shake hands, this is part of the way. And I know we're taking some time. And I know... Uh, Lexi, Chico, her many horses, he's kind of watching his watch because Chico's the arena director. And when it gets over, arena director. But you know what, Chico? We're moving right on time. Right, Chris? We're moving right on time. As long as uh, Famous Dave's is still open, we're good. Famous, is Famous Dave still open on Quebec Street? Is there still one over there? That's where we're going. Famous Dave, just like Twin Buttes, power. Get Famous Dave's catered in. Hey, speaking of Twin Buttes, we're going to invite you up there to Twin Buttes, North Dakota, Father's Day weekend, June 14, 15, and 16. Some of the councilmen, they usually sponsor Famous Dave's or uh, Dickie's Barbecue. Come on up, home of the champions.
You know, as all of our, our friends and family come on through to shake hands on behalf of the Pascaman family, I want to thank you for uh, coming on up and showing your support. We see some relatives from the uh, Florida Seminole. Florida Seminole coming on up from uh, probably Hollywood. Hollywood. Right there, we got, we got royalty in the house as well. Welcome. You know, as uh, the weeks kind of winded down, Randy, he, he uh, shared with me that uh, the family was making items and beadwork and kind of getting things together. And if you know the Paskin family, they're, they're very emotional. They're very, they got big hearts. They got big hearts, and it probably stems from Randy and Tiffany together. And then I know Jamin and Theron. They all got big hearts, show a lot of their emotions. And... Uh, and Lennon, I, I believe it finally hit right towards the end because it's a lot that's put into a special. There's a lot that goes into it to make it just right. With uh, the gift giving, the, the songs, the preparation. And then, of course, she has to speak on the mic too because that's part of the responsibility to, to welcome and then the closing remarks. But let me say, Lennon, you did an awesome job. Awesome job, very well done on behalf of the family. They're very proud of you. I know Randy and Tiffany and, and uh, Jolyn and, and uh, all the siblings, Jamin and Simone. They made it here too, Jamin and, and Shannon. They, they took a couple flights because of the snow and they said it was going to be bad, but yet it didn't even turn out like that, but they're glad they made it. And then also uh, Therian and then uh, Simone and... and uh, and I see Philip, Philip Musiman over here too, a relative from up Mos, uh, Mosquito, Mosquito area. Philip and Debbie coming all the way from Mosquito, right? Mosquito, New Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Philip's like Randy. He's captured down here in uh, Navajo country, yeah. Yeah. Not me, though. Not me. Yeah. Also, too, while I got the microphone, I want to make mention to uh, all the good people throughout the years, like Mr. Brian Fraker, our photographer. For many years, Brian, he travels powwows, and he takes a lot of pictures, and then he always hands pictures to the people for free, right? I know he's given Randy some pictures. He's given me a lot of pictures. But uh, on behalf of the family, Brian, I want to say thank you for all that you, you do in Indian country and the pictures that you take. So thank you for doing that, Brian. And then, too, uh, they want to uh, thank and acknowledge the uh, head judges that have served this, this uh, weekend. They want to thank those judges that have been running around. They know what it is because Randy, he's a longtime head judge, head drum judge. He's a reading director. He's a head singer. I don't know if he's an MC yet, though. Not an MC. Yeah. 
I believe Rusty Gillette's been taking the microphone here and there. I'm pretty sure. I haven't heard him yet, but I'd like to. I know it. Rusty Gillette's been grabbing that microphone, Lawrence. That's what I heard. Is that true? Evidently. Evidently, Rusty's been taking that mic. I get to use that word, evidently, one time. You know, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as she's coming on through here, shaking hands, we're going to also, I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge uh, Sandra uh, Shields. And along with uh, Gladys Jefferson, uh, uh, Sandra was also inducted into the, to the uh, Hall of Fame, uh, 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 one of the original fancy shawl dancers as well. And Sandra is here. And... Uh, she comes to represent and thank the Paskima family as well. So the Hall of Fame. And speaking of Hall of Fame, we got Philip Whiteman Jr. here too. Here, Vickis. The Sat Niha. The Sat Niha. Philip. Philip is a newly inductee of the, uh, the National American Indian Athletic Hall of Fame that took place on Saturday in Oneida, Wisconsin. And uh, he is here as well, drum number two. Lame Deer Singers. I believe we're going to go to the gift giving now this time as I get instructions from Tiffany. If anybody needs any hand sanitizer, I need some hand sanitizer. Anybody have any hand sanitizer? Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Kelly Grant, he said, I, I ask you to relay to the people, in 2013, Randy presented him with tobacco then to also come forth and pray for Simone when her, 
she was Miss Denver March. And then now with Lennon, Kelly said, it's a big, it's a great honor. And amongst our Omaha people, we accept that tobacco and we treat it with the utmost respect, integrity, because it's not just the one time for prayer, it's for the rest of their lives. And Kelly said, uh, Randy and I, we made brothers, and Tiffany, we made sisters, and both him and his, his, his wife, they, Patsy, they, they have a lot of respect for the family. And at the same time, they want to continue their prayers for, for healing, for safe journeys, and for many more miles inside this arena, representing the Indian ways and the, the, the traditional ways of song and dance. And Kelly Grant says, I want to thank Randy and, and, and Tiffany for allowing him to express himself to the Creator and to lay prayers down from here, from today, and tomorrow, and then on. On behalf of Kelly Grant, he says, We blaho. We blaho. Uh-huh. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start the gift giving at this time and honoring first, the family wants to honor the Northern Cree drum. They want to recognize these individuals that represent Northern Cree in a good way. I know we have some other uh, pickups, as they call, kind of filling in, but very fortunate to have uh, Marlon Deschamp, Steve Wood, Joel Wood, Jordan Fiddler and Elijah Williams and Penny McGilvery and Shayna McGilvery. These individuals that I call are kind of, I want to say, like the core, right? Uh, we, we want to thank the other ones like Rooster and, and uh, um, some of the other ones that kind of stepped in and helped out this weekend. Malcolm and some of the other ones that helped out we we ask you to hold the fort down there But uh, these main ones that come a long ways we're calling those ones up that I called upon Jordan and Steve and them So come on up shake hands We'd also like to call on behalf of Northern Cree, Hilda Wood and Leanna. Leanna Fiddler, the ladies, please come on up. Hilda and Leanna, come on up.
want to thank uh, the singers, the, the Northern Cree, the drum, the, the songs, the songs that were rendered. And I believe it was uh, Rusty Gillette that says, uh, championship songs for championship dancers, right? Championship moves by championship songs, something like that. Where you at, Rusty? Text me. Let me know. You know, in any given time, when we dance in a circle and we have a, a powerful drum like uh, Northern Cree, and they render these uh, specialty songs, sometimes that separates uh, a little bit of uniqueness, sometimes knowledge of the song, sometimes it lets the dancers and the judges know which dancer is doing their homework, which dancer has been uh, paying attention and and catching on. Sometimes songs are composed on the spot and it's up to an answer by the end of that song to catch the end of that, the way it ends, the way it ends early or something like that. At this time, the family wants to call upon Grace Gillette. Grace Gillette, if you would, come on up. And also all other Denver March Powell committee members. Grace Gillette and all the powwow committee members, come on up. I don't have a list before me, but I understand you know who you is. I think Diane Buck is on there. I believe uh, Michelle Flying Man's on there. Uh, Jonna Denny, I believe. Larissa Nobraid. Um, I'm not too sure, but Denver March Powell Committee, come shake hands with the Paskaman family as they have a gift. For Grace Gillette and all the committee members, thank you. Oh, I got a list right here. Nancy Roulard, Virginia Irving. Ken Ledoux, Diane Buck, Kelly Baca, Lennon Pasqua, Grace Gillette, Larissa Nobred. I believe I got everybody, right? Am I missing anybody? I said, Jonna. Am I missing anybody? I got everybody? Right. Thank you, Denver March Powell Committee. Championship songs for championship dancers. Thank you, Rusty. I don't know where you're at, but I want to thank you for that text. Hey, Rusty, you didn't have to send me a picture. At this time, I'd like to call upon Mr. Lawrence Baker. Lawrence, if you would, come on down, shake hands with the family. They have a gift for you. Lawrence Baker.
this time I'd like to recognize Chris Eaglehawk Sr. Chris? All right, Chris. Chris, can you, you, are you good to come down? Okay. Our arena director, Mr. Chico Hermini Horses. Chico, if you would, come on up, shake hands with the family. They have a gift for you. Also recognizing our other arena director as well, Mr. Steve LaPointe. Chico and Steve, come on up, shake hands. We'd like to recognize our uh, head judge, Kathy Scabiro. Kathy, come on up, accept a gift on behalf of the Paskiman family. I believe they say, books are put. Yeah, come up, come forth, right? If Skunky's here, Skunky's watching live, books are put. <laughs> Need to get. We'd also like to call upon the drum coordinators as well. I believe that's Corey Reeder and Bear Tyner, right? Want to make sure I got it right? It's kind of a big guy. No, not you. I think I can handle you. Bear's kind of a big guy. <laughs> Okay, Kathy Eagles, uh, Scabiro was the uh, with chocolate to drum. Okay, I got it mixed up. The judges were um, Elias Hermini Horses and Silas White Buffalo. Okay. I'm going up here blind with no sheet in front of me, and I really wasn't paying attention all weekend, but I seen him running around all weekend, Elias and Silas. Looking good, and uh, Silas had his collar off key a little bit, but nobody knew. And then uh, Kat was the, was she the backup with Chaglita? There he is. Did you fix your collar? All right, it's fixed. And Elias, he's looking 
fresh all weekend, some new, new gear. I like it, Lias. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me a, a pride and an honor to speak on behalf of Lennon. And uh, I've been asked uh, a few times to speak on their family on behalf of Jamin, and Terry, and Simone. Um, you know, the, the Paschima family, they're a, a very respectful family. And they always treat people with the utmost respect, with a handshake, a hug, kind gesture. And somewhere in Indian country, you'll see some jewelry made by Tiffany You'll see some beadwork made by Joe Lynn. You'll hear a song composed by Randy. But you know what? Uh, it gives me an honor to speak on behalf of the family, Randy. And I want to say thank you for, for calling upon me to uh, uh, say a few words. And uh, I have a gift here. I want to accept it with the utmost uh, honor. And thank you for my, my princess to coming on out and join the, the teen dancers and letting her do that. So thank you, Randy. Thank you, Lennon. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you, family. Ladies and gentlemen, I've also been given the second stick of the Apache Ways with the scarves on it. And Jared expressed to me that in their ways, it's for me to uh, give it to a man uh, that has come forth and for him to distribute amongst his family and friends. And it's a show of appreciation. And I want to thank Jared and the family for doing that. And I accept this wholeheartedly. The scarves on there I'll share with some of my brothers and, and family members, nephews. And then uh, the stick, at first Jared said you could do what you want with it, but you know what? It's just the right length to hang across my cupboards in my kitchen, and we hang dry meat off it. Old way. Ha'anawuk. Ha'anawuk. Thank you. Mahavikis. Mahavikis. Hiyoa e nanas. Mahavikis nehot. Nehot.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have the winner's list in the three contests, including the teen division, the old style, and the 18 plus freestyle. Is that okay if I say freestyle? Teens first. What's going to happen is we're going to call all the dancers out and then stand in your respective area. The first place champions, we're going to ask you to stand with the remaining six dancers until we call out the champions and then the champions will choose. 18 plus will choose one of the orange or the green outfit. The old style will receive the buckskin and then the 18 plus will receive the, the remaining one. Okay. Teen division in sixth place. Dancer number 1340, Talia Robertson. In fifth place, dancer number 421, Dean Shabala. In fourth place, dancer number 207, Elani Barr. In third place, dancer number 463, Rihanna Bird. It's Alani, right? Yes, Alani Barr. Each of our top six will receive a star quilt blanket wrapped around by Lennon. In second place in the teen division goes to dancer number 510, Red Star Kavanaugh. Your champion in the teen division Receiving a fully beaded outfit, number 457, Morning Rain Hunani. You know, ladies and gentlemen, our champion here, Morning Rain, I believe she uh, played basketball at Flagstaff High? Flagstaff High in Flagstaff, Arizona. And I know uh, she's graduating this year, and I believe she's going to play at the next level. She's being highly recruited. She's got a couple college visits yet to take place. But uh, I just asked her as she walked through here if she signed yet. But she said not yet. She has a couple more colleges and coaches to visit. So... So morning rain, wherever you go, we're going to be watching. We'll be watching. Just like Caitlin Clark. Yeah. Announcing the winners in the old style. In sixth place, dance number 1034, Kea Claremont. Fifth place, dancer number 119, Lisa Hill. In fourth place, dancer number 511, Rose Kavanaugh. In third place, I'll wait there for a little bit, add some suspense. We'll let some of these come on up and shake hands. Here's Kea, there's Lisa, and where's Rose? Our old style finalists are each receiving a shawl being draped here, wrapped by Lennon.
There's Rose. Rose White Temple. Rose White Temple. I get mixed up. I apologize. And now third place in the old style goes to dancer number 416. Josie Little Sky. In second place in the old style, dancer number 1296, Melinda Goodwill. Your champion in the old style, receiving a fully beaded outfit as well. Dancer number 411, Miana Kill Spotted. Your champion. And now announcing the winners in the 18 plus women's freestyle open category in sixth place. Dancer number 854, Tung Shi Clermont. In fifth place, dancer number 156, Carrie McNabb. In fourth place, dancer number 1280, Laura Lasley. In fourth place, dancer, or excuse me, I'm in third, huh? In third place, dancer number 415, Iatosh Bird. Our top six. 18 and up freestyle are receiving a beautiful handmade quilt being draped and wrapped by Lennon here. In second place, the runner up goes to dancer number 1335, Otisha Roberts. Your champion. And a fully beaded outfit, dancer number 1417, Wakiela Claremont, your champion. Once again, congratulations to all the top six finalists and to our champions. And as I receive further instructions on how to come and retrieve the, the fully beaded outfits here, I'll relay that here in a moment.
would also like to uh, recognize Mr. Brian Fraker, if you would. Come shake hands with the family after you're done there. Uh, after you're done. So continue on with your camera there. You're doing a good job, Brian. You know, while, while we're shaking hands and hugging here, we want to acknowledge Brian Fraker, our photographer for many years. The family also has a very special gift. And the satin star quilt you see here, the satin star quilt, it's going to be placed around an individual that has known Lennon from a baby girl, probably even held her, probably even burped her, Probably even maybe, you know, walked her around and, and showed her like a mother, like a big sister. She encourages her in every way possible. Be singing behind the drum, leading her, encouraging in her dancing. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to, the family wants to call upon Penny McGilvery for all that she does to fill those roles as a big sister, a mentor, and someone that she can look up to. So Penny, come and accept a gift on behalf of the family. Bubba Strain, come on up, Bubba Strain. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as we award our beaded outfits. Man, look at these. The 18 plus freestyle open, Waquila Claremont. Please come forth. You get your choice, the green or the orange. And since that star quilt is orange, I think orange will be matching. She chooses the orange, ladies and gentlemen. The orange beadwork is hers. Our old style, Miana Killspot, to come forth. You are receiving the smoked hide old style outfit here. Your champion, Miana Kill Spotted. And last but not least, our teen division, Morning Rain Hunani, champion. Come forth. You receive the green, the fully beaded outfit, champion coat. Congratulations.
Hold on, Jared. Hold on, Jared. We're going to have fun with that right there. We're going to... Uh, we're going to limbo. We're going to limbo contest between Lawrence Baker and Chris Eaglehawk. See who can get under that for... Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Chico. Picture time. Come on forth and take pictures. Pictures are up. Turn your beadwork over, girls. Turn your beadwork over. Let's show the beadwork. Move that jacket. Man, look at that. There you go. That's a picture right there. Okay, uh, girls, if you want to return back to your groups, I believe uh, we're going to uh, invite everybody else. If you want to come and take pictures with their respective groups, you may do so at this time. Family, friends, relatives, you may uh, come out and take pictures with the, contempt, with the open style, the old style, and the teen division. We have a whistle on Northern Cree on behalf of Philip Musselman. Everybody, come on into the arena. Everybody dance. Come and enjoy yourself. Whistle carrier, Philip Musselman, Mosquito. Check, 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 check. My Vegas. Check, check. Hi, 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 hi. 
Thank you for coming on now for that inner tribal and honoring that whistle and a whistle carrier, Mr. Philip Mooseman, and thank you, Northern Cree. Thank you, each and every one of you, for coming on out. Hey, hi, and each of you that stood wherever you were at and enjoying the music, enjoy the vibes. Thank you very much. Randy, Tiffany, will this conclude the special of the outgoing Denver Marsh Powell Princess? As soon as I'm told otherwise, I'm going to turn it back on over to Chris Eaglehawk and uh, Lawrence Baker. But on behalf of all the family members, they want to say thank you to each and every one of you that come on in with a helping hand, that come on in with a kind uh, thought, prayer, and good energy like that. Turn it back on over to Lawrence Baker. All right, Reuben, don't forget your shoes. You know, I did a podcast for Denver, and I did a podcast for Culture Stream, and I, last year, was so proud, and like Ruben said, we formed families, and I remember, because I'm so old, when Randy was singing all over the world. And he said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dance, what do you think? And I said, you need to do it. You need to try to do whatever you can. And he danced, became one of the very well-known grass dancers of his time. And he met, married a woman that he fell in love with. And they created this family. And although it is our way to joke and to tease, it is hopefully never in a harmful way. I expressed myself to Randy that I'm, I'm nobody, but I'm very proud of you for the man you become. Not only as a singer, but a dad, a creator of children that are just as good and like-minded as yourself, that don't expect anything in the world, but things come to them. Things are given to them. And I watched Lennon grow almost overnight to the height she is, and she's still growing. And she's going to be a very elegant and beautiful woman when she gets done. She's already starting to bloom. And as she was starting, somebody noticed her and said, let's put her in the role of a princess. And last year, again, like I had said at the beginning, her Che was not feeling well. And they weren't even going to come. They were going to stay. But something drew them here, as it always does every year, to come and be with us in the family of Denver at Denver March Celebration in Pawa. And they were here having a good time, but still calling back and still worrying. Lennon about Che. And all of a sudden, they were getting ready to go early and they were called. She was asked. And I remember looking at her like a deer in the headlights, like, what am I going to do with that? But she stood up and said, yes, I'll do that. I have told her over the weekend to be something that your big sister is in a unique company of is something. She is doing something right. I tell everybody, even on the podcast, I'm glad I don't get to pick, but I am always reaffirmed and reassured of the young individuals that they pick because for some odd reason, I get to see strength. I get to see tenacity and resilience from young women, individuals becoming the princess. And the reason why I like that is because they don't even know they have it in them. They don't even know the power that they possess. And I have seen all of the different Denver March princesses and they all have a strength 
Some are corporate lawyers. Some are journalists. Some are moms. Some are aunties and grandmas already. But each of them has something in their life that somebody saw. And I just love it for this young woman here because, as you would say, because of her height, she may be just a little bit clumsy and not really into her body or herself yet. But when she is, those couple of years that are coming, what a fantastic and beautiful woman this will be. And she doesn't even know it yet. How about a round of applause for her? I wanted to say this much. The other thing that I say, and I, I really hate to be this guy, I seem to make every princess cry, and I don't intentionally mean to do that, but I'm like, oh my God, Lennon, can you believe this is almost over? You had a fantastic run. What do you think? I didn't want to cry, she said, and then she's crying. And I... I, I did that, but that was not my intention. It is never my intention to make anybody cry. But I'm so proud of not only Lennon, her sister, her brothers, her mom, her dad, everybody that has come to be here for Lennon. And I said to her, take your time, do your welcome and enjoy all of these people here because Lennon, even though you don't know it, they all love you and they all came here to be with you, to celebrate with you. And this is something that you'll have for the rest of your life. They can't take it away from you. And so it is my honor and privilege to have started the festivities with Lennon and her specials. Ruben was always gonna come in and take care of all the other stuff, but they let me have the last words and as as we say with Simone and all of the princesses and now you and that's why I read all of that name down because you are part of an unknown untapped resource of Indian women in Indian country chosen by our own and what do you have to be a Denver March princess what do you have to be what are the qualifications I don't know you just have to be. You have to be good. You have to talk to people. You have to be a certain way. But it's that way, whatever it is, that catches the eye of all of the people that say, we want Lennon Paskament as our princess. And so it's not decisions that you make over social media. It's not likes. It's not any of that crap that you believe today is what it is. It's being a good person. It's being courteous and generous. It's always having a smile. And I believe that Lennon, when she was chosen, didn't realize why she was chosen. Same with Simone. They didn't realize. But I do know that they realize now why they were chosen. And it may take you a little while, Lennon, but you'll know why too. And from your mom and dad, they're so proud of you that it's just over the moon. They can't express themselves enough on how wonderful this is for you. And so they asked a knucklehead in a hat to express that for them. And that knucklehead happens to be me. And I have enjoyed working with you and seeing you all over YouTube at every pop. Look, there's... Lennon, she's at this. Uh, I see you either walk by or come in or be introduced. I'm like, wow, she's everywhere. She's everywhere. So I just wanted to say that much myself, on behalf of myself and Chris to watch these young people become who they are. It is truly grateful. Lennon, would you like to say a few thousand words? You can say some words now. And as I've talked for over 30 years, do me the honor and privilege of not saying your speech and tell all these people that you appreciate them 
that you love them coming here to be with you, what it means for the whole year, that kind of stuff. Is that what you want to hear, Denver? My name is Lennon Paskman. <laughs> it's so grateful to see everyone here for, to support me and support me and my family. <sighs> and I want to thank Lawrence for speaking for me, for, for everyone else, for all the former princesses too. And I'd like to thank my family <laughs> for um, supporting me too. And, Paving, or how would you say? <laughs> like, I'd like to thank my family for helping me and guide me through this path, <sighs> and for helping me through so many things and teaching me these, teaching me these ways and teaching me my language. <sighs> and I'd like to thank my sister Simone <laughs> for helping me be who I am and teach me how to make these beautiful outfits. She's really, she really does mean a lot to me. And my brothers for helping me through so many things and being there for me. And I'd like to thank my mom for, for, um, I'm so sorry. For, for helping me through so many things. She's really been there with me through so many things. And I really appreciate her so much. And I'd like to thank um, Jamin and Shannon and Javia for surprising me to be here. And it really does mean a lot that all of you guys are here to support me and my family. <laughs> and friends and family that couldn't make it here, I really do appreciate all of you guys. And my late goddess, my late grandma Gladys Jefferson for helping me with my special in 2016. <laughs> she she means a lot to me. <laughs> and my late Musham and Gukum, Ruby, Ruby and Henderson Paskerman. I really do miss you guys. <laughs> and thank you to the Denver March Powell Committee for giving me this opportunity to represent Denver March Powell. And I'd just like to thank everyone for being here for me and supporting me. <laughs> thank you so much. I'm training her to be an MC, the first female MC. I tell her, you're doing a good job, but you can't cry all the time. But that's all right. When you speak from the heart, all the truth comes out. And this young lady is overwhelmed for everybody that made it during the big storm of the century that all the Canadian North Dakota people drove through saying, this is just slush. Where's the storm? But again, I want to say on behalf of this young lady, it takes strength to wear the crown. It takes strength to walk around with the crown. And now it's going to take all of her energy and power to give it to somebody else. That's the hardest deal. And so, so far she has shown herself to be the choice that the committee made. So, 
One last time, ladies and gentlemen, she's going to walk to the middle and wave in her last walk as the Denver March 48th Annual Princess. Lennon Paskeman, ladies and gentlemen, how about giving her a big round of applause as she does her last walk? I want to sit in the middle of everybody. Right? I want to sit in the middle of everybody so when I start crying, everybody can hug me. I don't know if, I, if it's because I'm getting old, Lone TV Productions and all of you out there. I want to say hello to that woman in Tokyo. I want to say to those German people, it wasn't me. But as we gather, I again have said many times that it's not me but it could be. I want to introduce you to a 13-year-old seventh grader who attends medical, middle school where she excels at academics, academia. She is active in the This is in Sioux, so I'm, I don't want to butcher it. Usiti Skawin Owonsipi has been in the gifted and talented program from an early age. She comes from a long line of artists and musicians. She enjoys singing, dancing, traveling to powwows with her family, to powwows and gatherings around the country. She likes to eat Spam and bologna sandwiches when they don't tell her it's Spam or bologna. She loves to perform with her grandma. She's striving to help carry on a traditional arts of beading, sewing, painting alongside her family. She is very honored and grateful to be called upon and thought of in this re respect to represent the Denver March powwow as the 49th annual Denver March princess. She says, I don't, I don't know when everybody got political, but this is what she says, and I can see her doing this. She will do her best to carry this title in the best way she can. She is an enrolled member of the MHA Nation. I want to introduce you to Hishu Mia, peppermint woman, named by her late great grandpa Gordon Bird. She is the daughter of Josie and Trey Little Sky. Mia Mapia Little Sky. Hishu Mia, come on out. Did she already run off?
Here she comes all by herself. She must have been playing around way up there. Mia Little Sky. Now, one of the hardest parts. To go and take off the crown. And present it to the incoming Denver March Princess. Lennon is telling her I couldn't get it on my head the first time either, so I'm going to try to do the best I can. For those of you that don't understand, the crown and the sash go to the next one. And I believe the blanket is coming from the family to say that this was a wonderful job. And I wish you all the luck. From Lennon's family to Mia. All right, do you get a picture? Oh, I gotta, we gotta get some pictures on this side. All right, now, oh, the party ticket. Now, I need you in a good way, Mia. To give the blanket to your mom and take your first walk down to the middle and wave and come back as the new Denver March Princess. We got such formality, it's all good. Here she comes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Mia Mapia Little Sky, Hishu Mia, Peppermint Woman, your new Denver March Princess, 49th Annual. Family.
Yeah, go ahead, Harvey. Go ahead. You're on it. You're on it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, she's going to walk to the honor song of the Denver March. And the people of Denver, we ask you not to shake hands with her. I ask you not to get in front of her. I ask you to follow in behind her. And when we come to the front here, that will be time to congratulate. That will be time to say your thing. Oh, 
the shaking of hands as everybody comes through to wish Mia a successful and safe journey as she undertakes the journey of Denver March Princess. Good, good. He's excited too. You know, as everybody goes through line and acknowledges, I want everybody to know that uh, Mia and Lynn are really, really good friends. So they're all so excited that one will follow each other and know each other in such a good way that it was kind of a, a different feeling. Sometimes our, our princesses, they don't know the next person. They don't know who's going to... They might be from a different area. But I, like I tell people, the powwow world, the dance world, is a very small place. And everybody knows everybody. And for my parents that are here and the rest of the children, this is totally unexpected. This is totally something that we did not strive for. This is something that we did not 
ask for. This is something that came to us. And like I said, things come to us and we don't expect them. I know last year at this time, uh, Randy and Tiffany were, were surprised. Lennon was surprised. And now it's Mia's turn and the family to be, of course, shocked and surprised. And for some of you that don't know Mia, Mia is a bully and she's mean when she was young, when she was just a little girl. She was very forceful and she ran roughshod over her brothers and sisters. And now I'm glad to see her coming to a different level with her academics and her dancing and taking care of the younger ones, you know. There would be times that uh, they would get gifts and one of the older ones would get a big bike and Mia said, that's mine. And so she would take it away from them. Mia, you remember these stories? Remember these stories? No, I don't remember. Yeah. I remember. I seen her grow up. So anyway, what I'm trying to get at is through her mom and dad, we all go through things. Even the world-famous Poncho Brady used to cuss all the time. But only his family knows that. So what I'm saying is that good things can come. And this is one of those things that Mia is going to expand upon and learn to be in the arena, be grateful, have the success, and all of you people are going to help her get to that level. And she was already on her way there, but this is something that's going to put her over the edge. She's a heck of an athlete. She's a big sister. She's quite a good dancer. She's also a singer, but nobody knows that yet. She's still hiding, but she is a good singer. And I say that because nobody's supposed to know that, but she does secretly sing, and she's good. But it's just waiting for her to get to that point to come out. There's a shyness there. So all of that traveling with her, with her family will uh, encourage her to be a good, good person and to be respectful in a way. And again, none of us grew up that way. We become. And so evidently they've seen something in Mia to ask her to be princess. And again, our family is very, very excited and very, very thrilled. And those of you on uh, Lone TP Productions, tell all the relatives this is going on, all right? Back home, put it all over Facebook, put it all over Instagram, put it all over whatever social media you use. Good job, thank you. Want to thank all the relatives for coming down and supporting Mia. Even the, the Hollywood, Florida, seminal princess is here to shake hands with Mia. Mia did something at the Hard Rock that I can't talk about, so. I don't know if anybody knew that Mia was going to be princess, but there was somebody that came up to me and said, tell me, is Mia going to be the new princess? I already know. And I said, well, you know more than me. I don't even know. I didn't, even, I didn't know what's going on. This is so exciting.
Mia's the second oldest out of six. And these guys just got started, so. Also, some of you don't know this, but Mia is a really good cleaner. She's a really good cleaner. Hey, hey. You know, as we go through, again, we're totally shocked, overwhelmed. So we're going to get going with a little bit of gift giving here as soon as we get done with the line. And uh, we'll take care of acknowledging, acknowledging the uh, position.
Also, I forgot to tell everybody tomorrow it's Tommy's birthday, Tommy Mountain Sheep, and also Shanisha, her daughter's birthday. Also, they'll both be 22. <laughs> That's all right. Shark Week. It's a good thing it's Shark Week. Okay. The committee would like to take a picture with the princess. Kelly, we need you over here. Also, in two days, Iatosh is turning 21. I think she just told me that because now that makes me feel really old. They're going to take a picture, and I want to say on behalf of the family, there are six of her siblings, and uh, Iatosh, her older sister, is going to turn 21, and then Mia is the next one down, but I remember Iatosh when she was a baby, baby, and uh, wow, I really feel old, but as we go through life, all of these little ones, and um, Mia and Iatosh and uh, Trey... Josie, we always run with each other at the camp, and they have always either fed me or all the little ones come and hug me and say, it's going to be okay, Grandpa. I'm not, I'm not used to that yet, but still, I'm, I'm, I'm Grandpa. I finally reached that stature, but they've always been good to me. They've always taken care of me, and uh, I really appreciate them. So again, it is my honor to speak on behalf of, of these young people and their children who are now becoming uh, celebrities. Denver March Princess Celebrity. Now, oh, we're still taking pictures. You know, as we do things, Trey and Josie, we wanted to be prepared after they asked us that we didn't know what to do. So we asked Showtime to stand by, and evidently we didn't know that they were going to render the song and do whatever. So on behalf of the family and uh, Mia, we, we have some money for you, even though it might have been our fault or not. We want to say thank you to uh, Showtime for being ready. So send a representative forward. As we go 
through this way of life, we have a lot of tribes. And Josie, on her mom's side, her mom, Jackie, her late father, the late Gordon Bird, he was chicken. And Jackie is a child of a chicken. But we're not going to go on that side because we don't have that. We're going to go a Rickera way. And so at this time, we're calling a, a grandmother and grandfather from the Rickera side. So we're going to call a John Poncho Brady and Rebecca Tookie Brady to come forward. Maybe uh, Maida and Terry can help us out. Pick that up. I believe they headed out down to Oklahoma, I believe. So Maida, you'll pick that up for Grandma, Grandpa of Mia on the Arikara side. That's how we're going to go. There's Maida. When we do things, there's a protocol in which we do. And as our clanship happens on the three affiliated tribe, the Arikaras go back and forth with grandmother, grandfather, grandchild. And so we wanted to honor that way. The next gift that we want to do Oh, here they are. I always like it for my uh, clan brother and Tookie over here because they have no children. They're, they're empty nesters. And so they always like to have date night. So here we thought they left, but they were making out back there. So it's a good thing. It's a good thing I'm happy. This encourages me, Chris. The unity of man and woman married. I love it. All right. Now, again, we don't know how. We don't know, and we don't understand the process, and maybe we're not supposed to, but we want to recognize, and I, I, I would believe it's the board that selects the princess, so we have a gift to the board for recognizing not only our family, but the young individual that's going to represent Denver March. Uh, no, I'm Lawrence. Mister is was up there. I'm not sure he's still here. But I'm I'm Lawrence Baker. That's Mister Baker. want to recognize the former T.T. Paskaman. Lennon said you weren't supposed to say that.
from the family. One of Mia's uh, aunties said, I, I wanna, I'm not there, but I want to take care of the uh, emceeing. So they took care of me. But we also want to acknowledge Heartbeat for rendering that song that we danced to, Howard, if you would. He's not the composer. He's the catcher of that song. So I want to recognize him, Mia said. I want to recognize him with a blanket and say thank you. All right, now we know what to do. Family has gifted me already. Auntie has taken care of me. And I want to say I am very proud of this young girl. Like I said, I know stories about her when she was a little girl. And it's good to see her at 13, right? 13, just turned 13. And how she has handled herself now, it is totally different from before. She's very helpful. Uh, cleaner. She's a, a different one that is ex doing academics and sports and uh, all these things. And to be asked in a good way is my privilege to help out as I have always seemed to be here for Josie and all of the family. And it's been my honor to do that in that capacity and for you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our new Denver March princess. She says she wants to invite you back to next year. They are going to figure out what they want to do. They don't want to pledge something and be stuck. They want to figure it out, and they'll get back to the committee and let them know. And I know they'll advertise later on. Look forward to uh, maybe some new production from Topa uh, on the shirts to help fundraise or anything like that because um, they already gave a suggestion about the kids and everybody doing that heart thing. Uh, anyway... Iatosh has the idea, but somebody had suggested. I thought that was an awesome idea, too. And uh, that's their product line, Topa, as the family has grown to six children. Holy, still going, still going. Oh, we're done. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm just waiting to be grandpa. I don't, need, I don't want to have any more kids. So, Mia, I know you're going to do an awesome job. I look forward to it. Again, everybody that's in the arena, how about another big round of applause? This is what we wanted to do. Go it. We need our Eagle Staff carrier for the Denver March powwow. Chad Red Elk, you're still here. Come forward. Uh, also, we need our head judges, Elias and Silas. We're going to take our staffs out.
We're going to take our Eagle staff out, heartbeat. You know what to do. First official duty. Of Hishu. Hishu Mia, peppermint woman. First official. For those of you that don't know that are in the Coliseum, Chris just told me that it got cold down here. And I said, Chris, why did it get cold? And he said, I guess everybody in here had hot breath. Sick. I don't know how you do it, Chris. As we conclude the uh, celebration here, we're going to ask our, uh, our, our brother, our uncle, our grandfather, Howard, uh, to render, uh, ask the Creator to look after us as we go home and to thank him for this wonderful weekend. So, Howard. Uh, they also asked us to dance the singers out, so after I finish the prayer, I'll sit down and we'll, we'll sing the song so the dancers can go out. So if you put your hearts and minds and will, wills with me, I'd like to ask the Creator for help for us to get home safely, for us to really have good memories, and anything that needs to be done for the winners and for all their families, I'd like to pray that way.
And uh, at this time, we're asked to sing the dancers out, so we're going to do that. Then I'm going to sing the Devon Raj Powell song one last time uh, in a cappella. So uh, we'll, we'll sing, the, the group will sing the uh, veterans song, the flag song first. Then after we get that done, I want to finish the powwow with the uh, Denver Marsh Powell song. It's the very first song heard here, and it's the very last song heard here. And so I'd like to do that in a cappella after we take the dancers out. But in my prayer, I said to the creator, Mitakwe, Rasni. Oh, uh, thank you, Tahashi, for that closing prayer. Still. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take our staff out for the final time. We wish you well on your trip home. that song. Beautiful weekend, but the balance of everything was started out bad, turned into good, and that's how it is. Anything that's bad, we always turn it into something good.
Story Reader, and our head judges of the Spring Buffalo, Elias for many horses, and the Wichagalata, head judge, Kathy Scabby Road. First, we want to thank my partner here, Lawrence Baker, for keeping us on our toes. singers in order to get your last day pay you have to bring your sign to Corey 
in order to get paid. So drum group said, we're under a certain sign. You need to take that sign and come over to Corey and you'll receive your day pay. You can leave the pole up, but we would like to sign. How many times? Just two, two, two push-ups or three push-ups or all four? All four. All four. Also, the Tiger sisters are able to help, so get them to do something. Now, I was singing the uh, Denver March Power song. Hookah. It's always the first one heard at this power. It's always the last one heard at this power. So uh, we're going to sing it without using the drum. And the fellows who came to help me are, are joining in and singing that song. Two, two times through. Also, I want to let you know, uh, drum groups, if there are any signs left up, myself and Chris are going to take them down and collect the money. want to uh, thank Mr. and Mrs. Kathy Baca over there, Kelly, for doing an excellent job. 
taking care of us, running around. Your man doing an excellent job, running around. I want to say I appreciate you out of all everybody. I didn't know if we gave you special recognition or not because you are the one that brings food. And I love that. I love that. So I appreciate you. Thank you for taking care, good care of us, both of you. I know you do a heck of a lot more than that, but just for our part that you took care of us so well, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to uh, everybody that came this way and all of the singers came a long way. And uh, I want to just say thank you to uh, my girls over there, the, the Tiger Twins. I want to say thank you to them. They did an awesome job. Michelle. Your wonderful husband that I got to visit with. I want to say thank you to each and every one of you. I appreciate you. We had good visits, good talk. I look forward to more from both of you. I got to visit Michelle last year really good, and now her husband. And so now I know what the problem is. I will go back and diagnose it and figure it out for you. But already I know that it's not a problem, that you guys are doing well. And I, I appreciate you guys sharing your stories. And for all of you that are left in the arena waiting to get paid, I want to say good luck. Also, I want to tell each and every one of you, I'm not a preacher. I don't pretend to be. I have a lot of crazy ideas, and I, I put them out there. I have some advice for people. And my advice is you can either take it or leave it. You know? But I just want to say... The things that I shared with you are the things that helped me get this far in life. And that's all I'm trying to do is help anybody that wants to listen. And, you know, I want to thank uh, Philip, Philip Whiteman, the, the, the chief hereditary. I want to thank him. He was, a, he was uh, inducted in Wisconsin. But he told, as we're getting set up, he told the story that I want to repeat. I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble. Think I'm going to get in trouble for that one? Maybe I will. What do you think, Chris? Chico? There's these three old guys, Philip told me. And you know, old men, they always try to outdo each other. They were sitting outside of Denver March, and they were being talked to. And the guy said to them, hey, how long have you been coming to Denver March? The first guy said, I must have been about six or seven, and it was over here, and it was, it was over there, and I enjoyed it very much. And they came to the second guy, and they said, how about you? He said, I have memories when I was a baby. I have memories of the Denver March Fowl only being a one day or at a festival. And then it ended up here and there. So that third old guy was sitting there. This is what uh, Philip Whiteman told me. A third old man was sitting there trying to figure out had he had better memory recall. And he said, hey, I can outdo all three of you old timers, you two old timers. I can remember so far back that I came to the Denver March powwow. Early on, I came with my dad. And when I left, I left with my mom. You'll get it on the way home. Is this on? Is anybody listening to me? You snaggers know what I'm talking about. Wait a second. How did that happen? He came with his dad and he left with his mom. Figure it out. Are we still on the World Wide Web or have we been turned off? Oh, no. Those of you that are now trying to go get a gift, it's too late. Just letting you know. No Indian discount. All right. All of you that are saying... Let's go get a fry bread. The line should be down by now. There's no more fry bread. It's all over. 
Are we ready or what's going on? Diane looks lonely down there. Are you ready? Keep up. I also want to say, uh, seeing my good friends here at Denver March again, good to see my good friend Ralph Zotai. And I want to thank uh, Dennis for being a good friend to my son. It's good to see uh, Andy Kozad and also Cheryl. Good to see you guys. Maybe I'll see you in a couple of weeks here for that uh, conference. So, again, Andy, it's good to see you. Check one, two. I believe we're ready. Are you guys ready? Should I stall around some more? I want you to know over the World Wide Web that it's not me stalling around because I want to go eat too. And I don't want to get in the line. So we're going to try to go as fast as we can. All right. Now, listen up. We have a lot of envelopes and we have a lot of add-ons. So again, I'm going to let you know. There's some add-ons on these different envelopes, so bear with us. It might take us a little while to say it, but you're going to get a little bit more. We need our, our princess to come help us out. Princess in training for one night only. You're going to hand out all the envelopes. Can you stand? Are you going to be all right? Do you need your glasses? Okay. <laughs> I'm just teasing. She don't, she don't need glasses. We're going to start with the Ralph Zotai Southern Straight Honor Contest. And on your envelope, it says, Congratulations to the Denver March Powell Committee Zotai family, March 15th to the 17th, 2024. The spirit never ages. It stays forever young. In fifth place, Sal Aldez. In fourth place, Daryl Wildcat. In third place, Avery Fields. In second place, Kelly Grant. Your champion in Ralph Zotai Southern Stray Honor Contest, Lewis Perkins. $2,000 winner. Lewis Perkins has $2,000 on him, so anybody that he owes money, he said he'll take care of them in Oklahoma. 
Yeah, it's a good thing you don't owe anybody, he said. That's the champion right there. We're going to move right on over to uh, Youth Enrichment, Young Women's Fancy in third place. Miana Killspotted. In second place, Lara Lastly. Your champion is contestant number 575, it looks like. Malia Jacobs. We're waiting for the champ. We're waiting for the champ to get down here. We want to call out our third place winner in the youth enrichment young men fancy. Take your time. I got all night. Take your time. How many songs do you think you danced all weekend? Uh, a, lot. a lot. Come on. Should have said 34. In third place, the Youth Enrichment Young Men's Fancy. Dancer number 945, Buster Silas Cleveland. In second place, dancer number 147, R.J. Tweeter. Your champion wears the number 133, Keevan Brown. Kind of look halfway decent. You're going to have to take a picture, okay, just so you know. It'll be put away in the archives. We're going to go into the Wichaglata contest in third place. Women's Wichaglata overall. Uh, Anna and Amanda, third place. Is that right? Ana Anana and Amanda? Anana. Oh, Ariane. Oh, my gosh. I can't even make that out. I need bifocals for my IHS bifocals. That's third place. And second place. I don't even have any women. I just have Kozad. Second place, Kozad. Third place, we're still waiting for Ariana and Amanda. Oh, here they are. Check their IDs. Check their IDs. Close race. I was telling the girls it was a close race. Uh, third place had 207 points. And, and uh, the second place Kozads here had 209. So you must know some judges. <laughs> oh, buh. Good job. You guys did awesome. I'm surprised. I thought they were all young little girls over there. You guys sound so good. Your champion with 218 points.
Wakia Luta. We Chaglatas. Third place at 207. Second place at 209. Your champions at 218. Woo! They're so excited they don't want to come out. Okay. Here they are. Did you know you were going to win? Is that why you're dressed that way? Did you know? Classic. Hey, all right. These are all Chris's granddaughters right here. Woo, sounding awesome. You guys are what exactly I talked about what that is about. So good job. We're going to go to the teen Uchagata. Overall, it says... Must have been a solo. It looks like uh, with 140 points, Aubrey. Uh, is that right? Audrey or Aubrey? A U B R E Y. Is that you? Aubrey Keyswood, she said, is my name. Get it right, you're going to hear a lot more from me. Oh. Ho, ho. Second place. 171 points. Um, Amani Kalea Alyssa. Nobody? AKA Res Supremes? Your champion with 191 points. Matea. Matea McCauley, this is Chris's great, great granddaughter. Woo, good job. Man. Now we go to Journey Girls Fancy Shaw in fifth place. From Rapid City, Annabella Spoonhunter. Junior Girls Fancy Shaw, 7 to 12. Fourth place from Spirit Lake, North Dakota, Rose Kavanaugh. In third place from Ideal, South Dakota, Anastasia Foot. Second place, Junior Girls Fancy Shaw from Lawrence, Kansas, Haven Littlehead. Your champion comes from Ogallala, South Dakota, Josephine Chavez. Your champion. We go to Junior Girls Jingo from Norwalk, California. Tule Rose, Pretty Eagle, fifth place. Junior Girls Jingo. Fourth place from Shawnee, Oklahoma, Riley Primo. Third place from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Atea Little Sky. Second place from Ponema. Jay Zinda Kingbird. No love, no love.
Your champion in Junior Girls Jingle from Fort Capel. Amaya Goodwill. Who picked up for uh, Joe? It was the younger one. We're trying to figure out who picked up for uh, Josephine Chavez. Who's the younger one in the ribbon skirt? We need you to come back this way. First place had an add-on for Josephine Chavez, an extra $100 on behalf of Holly A. Kinney. So that was added to the envelope. We're going to Junior Girls Traditional. In fifth place from Livingston, Texas, Shasha Williams. In fourth place, uh, I don't know where from, 966 was the number. Pamasa Irving. In third place, from Thomas, Oklahoma, Abigail Littleman. Second place from White Cone, Arizona, Nanani Jack. Your champion comes from, looks like uh, a misspelling of Ether T, Wyoming. Olivia Old Coyote. Olivia, is that you? No? All right. Nanea Jack. In fifth place, Judy Boys Fancy from Dulce, New Mexico. Looks like Jeremiah J. Harrison, contestant number 102. Fourth place, number 302, contestant, Sinchangu Village, South Dakota, Javon Kenny. Third place, dancer number 590 from Pawnee, Oklahoma, Charlie Rice. In second place from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, wearing the number 304, Tokala Little Sky. Your champion comes from Coeur d'Alene, Nabahi Shabala. Dancer number 308. These envelopes say, as we go to Junior Boys Grass, that they were added on $100 for each place. And this is on behalf of uh, Virgil Duke 
Fox Howell Jr. $100 more on each envelope. In fifth place, dance number 333 from Tuba City, Arizona, Makai Fell. Fourth place from Denver, Colorado, dancer number 299, Wallace Tony. Third place from Albuquerque, New Mexico, dancer number 107, Ozias Wurito. Second place from Marshall, Iowa, dancer number 856, Omani Claremont. Your champion comes from Porcupine, South Dakota, dancer number 1320, Avery Newholy. So with not only the money from the prize, you get $100 more on each envelope. We're still looking for uh, Makai Fell and Wallace Tony. Remember, if you don't show up and you don't have any relatives to claim your envelope, it will be all put together in an envelope and sent to the MC's fund. So don't let that happen. All right, we're going to move over to uh, Junior Boys Traditional. Fifth place from Rapid City, South Dakota, Drake Peters. Dancer number 329. 10, Price Kozad. Contestant number 366 in Thud, South Dakota, Elias Layton Hankus. Second place from Allen, South Dakota, dance number 388, De Demarius Debray. Huh? From A-Town, South Dakota. We move to your champion from Lawrence, Kansas, Jasper Littlehead, wearing the number 577. We move on to junior and teens, chicken, 7 to 17. From partial North Dakota, that's number 326, Jack Reese. Fourth place from Ethan D. Wyoming, that's number 543, Colton Sunroads. Dancer number 296 in third place from Big River, Maximus La Liberty. Junior and teen, chicken, 7 to 17 in second place. Contestant number 1306 from Fort Collins, Colorado. Nazi Washichikwich. How do you say that? Do you know him? Nazi That's what I would say. Your champion comes from Browning, Montana. Dancer number 572, it looks like Camden C. That's Jack. Jack. Good job, man. What are waiting for? We're still waiting for the champion, Camden C. Dancer number 572. No, first is still coming.
Is that you? Mr. C? Hold on, you guys. Your champion's right behind you. How do you say your last name? Oh, it's not even on here. Camden Croft, that's what that was. All right, that's your champion right there. We're going to move to fifth place in Teen Girls Fancy Shawl from Wadsworth, Nevada, Alani Barr, dancer number 207. Fourth place from Sisseton, South Dakota, dancer number 1340, Talia Robertson. Teen Girls Fancy Shawl in third place from Minneapolis, Minnesota, dancer number 510, Red Star Kavanaugh. Second place from Bismarck, North Dakota, dance number 463, Rihanna Bird. Your champion in Teen Girls Fancy Shawl, contest number 457, says she's from Arizona, Morning Rain, Hanani. The next group I have have a $25 add-on for fifth, a $50 add-on for fourth, a $75 add-on for third, a $100 add-on for second, and $150 add-on for the champion. That was sponsored by... Uh, Visa Native, it'll say it on your envelope. In fifth place, from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, dancer number 414, the current reigning Denver March Princess, Mia Little Sky. Does that mean you gotta shake your own hand? Fourth place, from Chandler, Arizona, dancer number 1276, Daniela Baker. Sweetie Atticat. We move on over to third place from Kiwin, Alberta. That's number 406, Brings Thunder Woman. Brings Thunder Woman, I believe. All right, we go over to In second place from Kyle, South Dakota, that's number 4617, Girls Jingle, Pima Bull Bear. Pima, Pima. Your champion is, where's the number 427 from Browning, Montana, Rihanna Spoon Hunter. With a $150 add-on on her envelope and a jacket and, oh, that's it. calendar and a bumper sticker. We also have now add-ons on this category, Teen Girls Traditional, from the Daughters of the American Revolution add-on, $50 for four places and 100 for first place. Add it on. Those are the ads on. We move over to Teen Girls Traditional from Mayetta, Kansas. That's your number 609, Justina Jessup. Fourth place from Etha D. Wyoming. Where's the number 220? Tamaya Colity. Teen Girls Traditional in third place. All the way from Spirit Lake. North Dakota, dancer number 1337, Georgia Alec. Georgia. Second place, all the way from Bismarck, North Dakota, dancer number 470, Teen Girls Traditional, Tyree Ridge Bear. 
Your champion wears the number 403 from Manderson, South Dakota, Shante Iron Horse. Shante Iron Horse. We have add-ons from Visa Native, 25 for fifth, 50 for fourth, 75 for third, 100 for second, and 150 for first. We move over to Teen Boys Fancy. Those are the add-ons that I said. All the way, dash number 514 from Bahuska, Oklahoma, USA, Van Wildcat. Fourth place, dash number 986 from South Dakota, Chetan Chavez. We move over to third place from Winter Rock, Arizona, dash number 1256, Kenneth Brown Jr. Your second place winner comes from Chen Lee, Arizona. Dancer number 938, Liam Yazi. Your champion comes from Chandler, Arizona. Dancer number 1275, Little Baker. What's going on? No little, let go of that woman little and come down. Sick. <laughs> there he is right here. Woo! Good job, good job. We go to Team Boys Grass. Dancer number 1295 from Fort Chates, North Dakota. Chaos Du... Obene. Maybe I'm saying that wrong. I don't know. Fourth place from New Laguna, New Mexico. Dancer number 963, Joseph. Canada. Joseph Canada Jr. Third place from Pine Ridge, South Dakota. Dancer number 1445, Jerry Reynolds, not afraid. Second place, dancer number 435 from White Shield, North Dakota, Thomas Bearstail. Your champion comes from Eagle Butte, South Dakota. That's number 755, Jackson, taken alive. We're gonna move to Teen Boys Traditional, 13 to 17. In fifth place from Pawnee, Oklahoma. That's number 589, Leland Rice. Fourth place, that's number 1422 from Pawnee, Oklahoma, Avery Fields. Third place, all the way from Brimhall, New Mexico. Dancer number 610, Trenton Jim. Second place, dancer number four, eight, 408, Camden Scribe.
I'd say where you're from, but I don't know where that's at. Makua. Sagihik. Camden Scribe. Your champion comes from Spirit Lake, North Dakota. Dancer number 1443, Cold Three Irons. Your champion, Cold Three Irons. Nobody here, huh? We are going to go to uh, Living Treasures, 70 plus, and there's a $75 add-on for fifth, $100 for fourth, $200 for third. Second is a $300 add-on, and your champion will have a $400 add-on. Anonymous, in memory of a departed friend, it says. 70 years plus in fifth place from Weatherford, Oklahoma. Dance number 1312, Winifred Whitetail. Waiting for fifth place. Winifred Whitetail, fourth place, Living Treasure Women, 70 and over, from Valcourt, North Dakota, contestant number 667, Denise Lazmadir. Third place winner, contestant number 369, Sandra Shield. Second place, Contestant number 1375, Leona Arrowite, Blackfoot, Idaho. And your champion, Living Treasure Women 70 Plus from Denver, Colorado. Contestant number 852, Carmen Claremont. Yes, champion. We'll give them a little bit time here to get down here. When they were in golden age, they used to run. Maybe they went to all night bingo. Evidently, evidently, we, evidently, we might have to put that in the announcer's fund. Only the champion is coming down. Also, on behalf of my good friend, my brother, Chico Hermeni Horses, he wants to say and thank um, our two head judges. Silas, White Buffalo, good job. And Elias, her many horses. He wants to thank these two boys because they learned a lot this weekend. They were very polite. And the other thing that he said was they weren't afraid to ask questions. And it made his job easier. And you know, as we go through life, we're always looking to see who's gonna carry on and who's gonna be. And Chico said, I had the very honor to work with these two boys and they held up their end better than most adults that have done this for a long time. And so he said, it was a very privilege and honor to work with you. Also Steve, in training Steve, LaPointe, he doesn't know everything yet, but he's getting there. And he said, I want to thank Steve because he listened and he did what I had to say. And again, Denver is a big doings. Maybe need two uh, ADs at all times. But 
Steve did a good job. I want to thank him for coming out. Again, easy to teach. They did not question why. They did not do or die. They basically said, whatever you want done, I have a question about this. And so for my brother Chico, he just wants to say thank you. And one of them is his grand boy. But again, it was awesome working with you. All right, living treasure, men, 70 and over, fifth place from Casper, Wyoming, contestant number 942, James Dewey. James Dewey, fifth place winner. Fourth place, contestant number 997, Fred Stans from Og, Ogallala, South Dakota. Third place winner, contestant number 851, from Kirtland, New Mexico, Tommy Draper. Sixty-eight, sixty-seven, sixty-eight. He was state champion. Second place goes to contestant number five hundred six, all the way from Alborque, New Mexico. Boy, lad, senior. And your first place winner, your champion, contestant number 360, Royce Kingbird, Red Lake, Minnesota. Okay, these have add-ons, Golden Age Women, Jingle fa Fancy, uh, add-on of uh, 400, first, second, 300, third, 200, fourth, 100, 75 for fifth. All right, Women's Golden Age, Fancy Jingle, fifth place. Fifth place, contestant number 511 from Minneapolis, Minnesota, Rose White Temple. Fourth place, contestant number 1379, Lodge Pole, Montana, Corina, Maine. Third place winner, contestant number 1439 from Laguna, New Mexico, Charlotte Sosi. Second place winner, contestant number 140, Elvara Sweetwater, Colorado Springs, Colorado. And your champion, Women's Golden Age Fancy Jingle, contestant number 248, Lady Bird Jack from Arizona, Arizona. Waiting on Lady Bird. In the women's golden age. Golden Age traditional, there were only four contestants, so we go to fourth place, contestant number 1252, Bobby Hamilton, fourth place winner. Third place winner goes to contestant number 1296, Melinda Goodwills from Saskatchewan. Something Creek. Something creek. <laughs> Second place, all the way from Kirtland, New Mexico, Contestant number 
765, Laura Draper. And your champion, Women's Golden Age Traditional. Contestant number 855, Jay Myers, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Okay, men's golden age, Linda. fancy and grass and chicken. Linda, check your envelope. We're starting with four, fourth place. Contestant number 630, Marty Penacus, Ignacio, Colorado. Third place, men's golden age, fancy grass and chicken. Goes to contestant number 606, Austin Jacket, Toyak, Colorado. And your second place winner from Arapaho, Wyoming, contestant number 617, Lionel Bell. And your first place winner, Men's Golden Age, Fancy Grass Chicken Dance. Contestant number 1285, William Hensley, Cumberland, Wisconsin. Hey, you gotta do some dancing here before he gets his envelope. All right, moving on to a men's golden age traditional in fifth place. Contestant number 949, Lorenzo Beard, Moore, Oklahoma. In fourth place goes to contestant number 249, Pat Ironcloud, Ethiti, Wyoming. Third place winner, all the way from Zuni, New Mexico, contestant number 991, Fabian Pontanel. Fabian. Yeah, he pronounces it different every time I see him. This time it's Fabian. <laughs> Second place winner goes to contestant number 247, Scott Evans, Wilson, Wyoming. And your champion, your first place winner, Golden Age Men's Traditional, contestant number 246, Kelly Grant, Rama, New Mexico. Your champion. Okay, these are add-ons for senior women. Four hundred for first. 300 for second, 200 for third, 100 for fourth, 75 for fifth. And the Visa Native. Visa Native sponsor. And these are the senior women's Jingle Fancy. In fifth place, contestant number 290 from Wadsworth, Nevada, Michelle Babadia. In fourth place, 
Contestant number 119, Ontario, California, Lisa Hill. Fourth place winner. Third place winner. Contestant number 127, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, Paula Shabala. And your second place winner, all the way from Fort Kapal, Saskatchewan, contestant number 537, Lisa Ewak. And your first place winner in the senior women, Jingle Fancy. Contestant number 854, Tungshi Claremont, your champion. All right, senior women's northern and southern traditional in fifth place. Contestant number 254, Akumani Kozad, Wichita, Kansas. I'm sorry, there's extra sponsorship money. Ankawi Kozad, I hope I pronounced your name right. Fourth place winner from Partial, North Dakota, contestant number 1356, Randy Hart. Third place winner goes to contestant number 1341 from Peaver, South Dakota. It says Dakota. 341 contestant, third place winner. Second place goes to contestant three, oh, contestant seven, five, seven. Caspi Abbey, Mandaree, North Dakota. And your first place winner goes to contestant 139, Rama, New Mexico, Patsy Garcia Grant, your champion. All right, congratulations. Okay, moving on to the senior men's grass fancy chicken. In fifth place, White Shield, North Dakota, contestant number 1427, John Bearstail. Your fourth place winner from Eagle Butte, South Dakota, contestant number 756, John Taken Alive. Third place winner from Chinle, Arizona, 939, Amos Yazzie. In second place goes to contestant number 1446, Julius Not Afraid from K Town. And your first place winner, Senior Men's Grass Fancy and Chicken, goes to contestant number 118. Randall Haskaman, West Valley City, Utah. Your champion. There he is, on the run. Senior men's, Northern Southern traditional. Fifth place winner, contestant number 153, Morris Woolbear from Kyle, K-Town. 
Fourth place winner goes to Donovan Abbey, contestant number 758. And third place winner goes to contestant number 134, Rusty Gozad, Anadarka, Oklahoma. Second place winner, contestant number 534 from Oglala, South Dakota, Ronald Crossdog. And your first place winner, senior men's Southern Traditionals, Northern Southern Traditional, contestant 159, Brando Jack, White Cone, Arizona. Okay, uh, from Colorado Axis, uh, add-ons, fifth place, 75, fourth, 100, third, 200, second, 300, first, 400, add-ons from Colorado Axis, Women's Fancy. In fifth place, Women's Fancy. Contestant number 575 from Oneida, Wisconsin, Malia Jacobs. Fourth place winner, contestant number 415, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Iatosh Bird. Third place winner, contestant number 1253 from Ada, Oklahoma, Morning Star Roberts. Second place winner, contestant number 1280 from Scottsdale, Arizona, Laura Lasley. And your first place winner, 18 to 39, women's fancy, contestant number 1417, Wakila Claremont, Marshalltown, Iowa. Your champion. Yeah, Lauren's giving her advice on finances there. We have an add-on in the women's jingle. Lara No Braid. Um, they wanted to add on 75, 100, 200, 300 for uh, second, and 400 uh, for first. And Lara and the girls were uh, featured in a couple of episodes of a movie. And so they felt like in their good fortune that they would like to give a little bit back. And so it ended up in these envelopes of women's jingle. We go to fifth place from Fort Capel, Saskatchewan. That's number 407, Amanda Goodwill. Fourth place, dance number 863 from Bismarck, North Dakota, Nita Killspotted. Third place from Lawrence, Kansas, dancer number 960, Asia Tweeter. Second place, dance number 527 from White Swan, Washington, Ariana Shika. Your champion comes from White Cone, Arizona. Where's the number 475? Prairie Rose Jack.
All right, we're moving right on down the line. And now Larissa Nobraid wants to do the same thing. Again, her and her sister were uh, featured in a couple of episodes of Echo. And again, they wanted to spread the wealth and basically say that they're very honored to see what happened. And they, too, wanted to put some money back. So 75 first, 100 for fourth, 200 for third, 300 for second, and 400 for first. So fifth place from Ethan T. Wyoming, dance number 993 in Junior Women's Northern Traditional, Heaven O Coyote. Dancer number 1333, fourth place from Star Blanket, Kaylee Star Blanket. What is this? Randy Birdhart? Uh, third place from Sioux Falls. It says Sioux Falls Par, North Dakota. Contestant number 152, Randy. I believe that's Randy Bird from Sioux Falls. In second place, dance number 468 from White Swan, Washington. Jovina Scabby Robe. Your champion comes from Kainite, Alberta. That's number 461, Faith Goodstriker. We'll go to categories junior women, Southern Bucks getting cloth in fifth place from Apache, Oklahoma. That's number 937, Kayla Boynty. All the way in junior women, Southern Bucks getting cloth. That's number 520 from Tulsa, Oklahoma, Brittany Taylor. Third place from Billings, Montana. That's number 418. Natani holds the enemy. Second place, Southern Buckskin and Cloth. 477 is the number from Porcupine, South Dakota. Isabella Frida. Your champion comes from El Reno, Oklahoma, USA. That's number 558, Janet Bullcoming. We have some add-ons on behalf of John Poncho Brady in Men's Fancy. 75 for fifth, 100 for fourth, 200 for third, 300 for second, and 400 for first. We move to Junior Men's Fancy, 18 to 39, fifth place from Flagstaff, Arizona. That's number 155, Preston Olney. Fourth place, dance number 945 from Linden Station, Wisconsin, Buster Cleveland. Third place from Sacramento, California, dance number 133, 
Bryson Charles Brown. Second place in Junior Men's Fancy from Lawrence, Kansas. That's number 1348, part of the Broke Student Society, Mitchell Baker. We move to your champion from Lawrence, Kansas. Wore the number 579, Xavier Littlehead. Moving down the line of Junior Men's Northern Traditional in fifth place from Fort Belknap, Montana. That's number 390, Brad Sehos. Fourth place from Atwood, Oklahoma. That's number 142, Moo Roberts. Third place from Fargo, North Dakota. That's number 121, Chadwick Red Elk. E second place from St. Michael's, North Dakota. That's number 1314. Jonah Jackson. Your champion comes from Window Rock, Arizona. That's your number 474, Malcolm Murphy. Moving on over junior men's grass, 18 to 39. We have fifth place, dancer number 1282 from Chandler, Arizona, Marshall Baker. Fourth place from Green Bar, Wisconsin, dancer number 1429. Well, Keon Fiddler. Third place, dancer number 1254 from Tacoma, Washington, Siksika Scabby Robe. Second place from Lapway, Idaho, dance number 392, Red Sky Chimberas. Your champion comes from St. Michael's, North Dakota, dance number 1439, Hunter Street. We move over to Junior Men, Southern Straight, 18 to 39 years of age. Fifth place from Rocky Boy, Montana. That's number 125, Serenus Mithlo. Fourth place, that's number 148 from Sheep Springs, New Mexico, Sky Smith. Third place, that's number 591 from Pawnee, Oklahoma, Ronald Rice. Second place from Flagstaff, Arizona, that's number 370, Lewis Perkins. Your champion comes from Colorado Springs. He wears the number of 111. Darian Atakai. Visa Native has a add-on, 400 for first, 300 for second, 200 for third, 100 for fourth, and 75 for fifth. And we go to fifth place, dancer number 132 from Peyton, Colorado, Shote Tweeter. 
Junior men's chicken, 18 to 39. Fourth place from Ethan T. Wyoming. That's number 1290, Treshawn Spoonhunter. Third place. That's number 1332. From Red Mesa, Arizona, Shante Begay. Third, second place, that's number 1336 from Browning, Montana, Cortez Osborne. Your champion from Bring Hall, New Mexico, dancer number 970, Trevor Jim. Hey, that's all she wrote. Woo! Is that how that song goes, Chico? That's all she wrote. I sent your saddle home, yeah. Thank you for hanging out with us. That's all we got. The other envelopes will be sent out for those that didn't pick them up. All right, we need to, who's the first, first one you have? Corey Reader. Corey Reader. Corey Reader, and then we have uh, Elias, her many horses. There's Corey Reader right there. Corey, we want to take a picture. They're waiting for us over there. Head staff picture. Good job. Uh, Steve Areno. Steve LaPointe. Steve LaPointe. I just changed his name, Steve Areno. <laughs> Chico, her many horses. Right here. Where do they all go? We want to take a picture, you know. Everyone wants to leave. You're already late for Famous Dave's anyway. Just take a picture. Chris. Chris Eaglehawk. Friday, he said it was Chris Younghawk, but now it's Eaglehawk. He said, I don't feel that way anymore. <laughs> Also, Bear Tyner. All right. Bear is the champion. Let's turn them the down a little bit. Hey, what you guys like? What you guys think about the, the new digs? Well, thank you for hanging with us. Thank you, everyone who's still here, who watched all the... We watched all the winners get their prize money, get their tokens of appreciation. The committee's doing their picture. Um, yeah. Many more powwows ahead of us. Uh, again, as I was saying with the 
with the uh, schedule so far, we're going to have um, the only ones we have lined up right now is Comanche Little Ponies ahead of time or ahead of schedule. And then right after that, uh, we have Kinder that has a commitment. Um, Fort Washakie has a commitment. Perkins in the middle of those two. And then hopefully lining up some more. We have some more uh, proposals out there. And so thank you to everyone. If you guys want to like, subscribe, do all that. We can also, um, if you guys want to donate, you guys can donate super chats, super stickers, stars on Facebook, any of the gifts on TikTok. I know we had to, we ran into a problem with TikTok earlier. So uh, if our TikTok viewers are on here, you guys can, you know, like and subscribe on YouTube. But again, thank you for tuning in. We will see you on the next powwow. We'll leave you with a little bit of music. As always. Where's it at? Where's it at?